Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. So how much of a relief is it to have the album done? Uh, You've would, been working on this for a while, huh? Yeah, it would be a relief if I got a chance to chill out. I just, uh, I just kind of mixed it, mastered it, mastered it again. That took a little while. And uh, I was supposed to go on vacation. I was going to take a trip and go chill out and like think about it. And it took like, that didn't end up happening. So I just turned my phone off for like two or three days. And then it was... Let's go talk about it and break it all down, and you know. So, it's 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 a relief. It's finally done, but it just it's kind of kept going. So I haven't had a chance to like chill on it. Those breaks are important, right? Those just vacation breaks, just shut your brain off breaks. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I, yeah, I really, I really wanted that one. <laughs> 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 I really, really Looking wanted to. those margaritas. I needed it. I just wanted to. Chill. I just wanted to go be by myself. Just camp out in the woods by myself. Or oh, something. really? Yeah, just be completely solo. Oh, and yeah. Just chill out. You know, I was. I just made forty. I was just wanted to go, chill out and go. Wow, you know, reflect and be like, wow, this first forty's been pretty cool. Like, what's yeah. gonna happen in the next? And it was like, boom, New York City, Tonight Show, Questlove looking at me. I was like, this is not what the plan was. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to force the plan and those, yeah. all those other people. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, you have a lot of people to make happy. Absolutely. But I'm, uh, I'm also excited to do it. You know, mm -hmm. Sometimes if I get too comfortable, I get comfortable just being comfortable. Right. And, I like, and then like, nothing gets made. Yeah. you know, I kind of like to get out there and get the nerves going, blood going a little bit. Yeah. You know, get out in front of folks and figure it out. Yeah. You know, so it's Well, that's cool. a little bit of a vacation from the creative process of making it, right? Because the process of making I me, mean, you were, I mean, I know, you were locked up. Yeah, well, yeah. You lock yourself up, dude. Yeah. You do it. Like, when you do it, you go all in. Well, I think I, I still care about this shit. You, know? you can tell. I really care. Like, I... I you know, people are like, what the hell are you making a whole album for if it's about singles? I'm like, I still like listening to to a full record, putting a record yeah. down, you know, having the needles scratch the thing and playing it and then, you know, flipping that other side and seeing what's happening. I still like listening to a record from top to bottom. If you know, there's anything that I've ever learned, it's that you do what you like to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the trend of the business is. Just fucking do what you like to do. Oh, yeah. You yeah. like albums? Make a fucking album. Yeah. yeah, sure. And so, yeah, that's what I did. I've been. I mean, I, I was locked in. A lot of it was by choice too. You know, it was like, I, I just love being in a spot. I built a studio. I was like, well, why not fucking use it? Yeah. You know, so that's what I did, kind of to a fault. My wife was like, you, know, you got to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> You know, trying to hang with you, get me <laughs> yeah. out of the house, socialize yeah. me and stuff. Yeah. And I was just, I was just locked in, you know, just nerding out, trying to make noise, organize noise, you know. But the end is beautiful. Thanks, the, the end result is beautiful. Thank you. Thanks There's for so that. many layers to the music, man. I got it last night. They sent me a link, but then the link needed a passcode and I couldn't get a passcode. And then last night they sent me the link. Yeah, so yeah. while I was writing last night, when I came from the store, I listened to the whole album. Awesome. So, awesome. Man, there's so many. The the music, the sounds, like right off the bat, there's so many layers. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's very, you could tell there's so much thought into it. There's a lot of smoke in the air. Yeah. A lot of mezcal. <laughs> a lot yeah. of vino flowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just, uh, and there was nobody saying, you know, usually it's, for me, people expect a certain thing, you know, and uh, like, you know, I get have talks like, don't no strings on the album, stay away from singing falsetto stuff because your core fans don't like it. And I was like, I just don't give a fuck. Like, I didn't care. I was it was a middle, in the middle of COVID, yeah. So everybody was locked down, and I was just like, my phone was down, nobody was talking to anybody. I just that, got I got weird, man. I got to weird. Me, in the that studio. is so crazy that anybody is around you that gives you that kind of advice. Well, it's 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 folks that are in the business, and you know, I guess people. I've been I've been told that I'm not. I'm. 
I'm a hard act to put on a shelf. You don't know where to put me. So they don't know right. how to market or sell this confused kid who, <laughs> who plays power chords and listens to Nirvana, who also loves Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, who thinks that Thelonious Monk is one of the baddest dudes on the planet, who wants to play harmonica like Sonny Boy Williams. And they're like, what the fuck are you? you know? so, You're Gary Clark Jr. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it. exactly, exactly. But it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird time, you know, like just people want to be able to call you something. And as, yeah. you know, so they tried to do the whole n next Jimi Hendrix thing and that didn't really work out. I kind of rebelled on that. And yeah. they were like, oh, fuck, now what? You know, so here we are. You know what I mean? It's, um, but, I, you know, there's no reason not to try shit. All my favorite artists tried shit. Yeah. I mean, that's why I like, you know, Prince, mm -hmm. tr like unapologetically, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. You know, that's also why I Sturgill like Simpson. hanging out with you motherfuckers, because y'all just be trying shit. You yeah. know, you do, you know where the <laughs> you know where the the wall is when you hit that motherfucker. And you go, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, the thing about our thing is we have to do it in front of people. Yeah, you right. Yeah, so yeah, right. it's me stoned in front of a computer, <laughs> going, "Oh, this is so crazy!" Write shit out, right, right. put it on my phone, and then going, "All right, let's see, mm -hmm. let's see what other people they can see how it comes to life." But you yeah. can create all kinds of magic alone that's a different thing well i might think it's magic and you never know until i think the, it's magic until the thing drops so we'll see what dude. happens but yeah i feel good about it thanks for listening man that's, oh my pleasure you know i'm a fan it. dude I, I don't know your thing kicks off our fucking night almost every night at the mothership Woo. when we get in that green room we get in that green room we want to get things popping that's i don't know your thing is a fucking hey. that's a work of art it's that's just a classic it's just kind of a rude it's awesome. Fuck y'all, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, it's awesome. It's Thanks, awesome. Yeah. yeah, but congrats on uh, one year, man. Thank you. Thank one you. year. Yeah, it's crazy. It's awesome. It flew by. Yeah. It feels like we just opened. Y'all been doing it, man. That word on the street, y'all are taking over. It's game changing. It's man. fun. For real. We got so many guys moved here now. Oh, I know. This They're my neighbors now. <laughs> <laughs> way out in the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the smart way to live, man. I yeah. tell everybody, I go attack it from the outside. Yeah. Like Tony Hinchcliffe, he likes living in the city. I'm like, that's great and everything like that. But yeah, you, yeah. you're going to go crazy. You want to be right. outside. Get that balance. Yeah, when I lived so. in L.A., I lived way outside of L.A. in in the hills with coyotes and mountain lions yeah, and right. shit. I had to worry about hawks. And, yeah. You know, those are like the things that I would think about. I'd like just that quiet, just quiet, and then get into the crazy and then get back to the quiet. It's a choice. Yeah, choice. just choice. have a, like, the way you're doing it, it's perfect. Live in the country, just relax. Yeah. yeah. When you get outside and you know, drink a cup of coffee on your porch, man, you're just chilling. Exactly. Just birds and shit. Just yeah. beautiful grass and trees. Yeah. Just... <sighs> yeah. I've become such a fucking nerd, bro. <laughs> I've, been... <laughs> I've been sitting outside and, like, walking around my house. I've gone to the camera store. I've spent way too much money on camera gear trying to capture the perfect clip to send National Geographic of the Mexican eagles in my backyard. And you I'm got just Mexican sitting, eagles I'm in your backyard? I'm just sitting out there with the crazy zoom lens. Oh, yeah? just quiet, stalking them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to get this shot. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, I spend way too much time out there. But, you know, it's... So you got one of those big, crazy nature lenses? I'm, I'm that guy. Oh, wow. I think I might quit music and try and get a gig doing that. Really? I get off doing that. Like, I'm, really? I get, yeah, I'm... Yeah, it's a Mexican oh, yeah, eagle. Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. what a cool looking bird. Yeah, Dude, man. He's got a toupee or something on. Yeah, 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 yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> Crested Caraca. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that how you say it? Caracara? Caracara. Caraca? Yeah. Caracara? Mexican eagle, what a fucking beautiful animal. Yeah, yeah. You have those in your yard? Yeah, That's there's a like there's a family of like three of them. They swoop down and hang out all I the had, time. I had a hawk try to sweep in on my chickens the other day. Mm -hmm. The chickens in the backyard, and all of a sudden the chickens start going, bah, 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 yeah. bah, bah, f flopping their wings and running around. And I look, I'm just this hawk coming yeah. and circling. You got to watch out for those motherfuckers. Yeah. I saw a, a hawk swoop up a kid, and I didn't think about that when I moved out into the. This is on video or something. I don't know oh, if this was it's fake. Probably an eagle. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I was like, I didn't even think about having to look out for that in the country because the hawk came down and swooped up or swooped down and got one of my chickens. Right in front of my boy, he was like five at the time. He's like, what is that? I was like, woo, that's, you know, 
that's that's the world happening. You that's know what nature. I mean? That's nature. That's so, how it goes down in the real world. Exactly. Not this weird thing that we've constructed to insulate ourselves yeah. from it. And think that we're the most powerful. I mean, when you sit out there and you see a hawk swoop down and grab another, you know, sizable animal and just take off with it, you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. You know, yeah. it's not that safe. I mean, I, I walk around out there on my property and there's been a couple of times where I've almost stepped on a rattlesnake yeah you know um, my wife and kids just stepped over a rattlesnake getting out of the truck right there in the driveway and those little baby rap, uh, rattlers they had no idea I looked down stomped on his head I was like <laughs> you know you, you don't have to think about crazy things like that you know going fishing my daughter caught a water moccasin oh shit yeah, a fishing line. Yeah, she was all excited. Daddy, I got a snake. I was like, Yo, <laughs> <laughs> not that one. Not that one. That is not the one you want. Wow, on a hook. Yeah, on a hook. She, it was like a one of those little, um, like one of those little kid poles. It's like a an Elsa or one of those little mm-hmm. princess <laughs> poles. Right, she right. Just, you know, reeling in cotton mouths. Wow, like nothing. Yeah, country. No, they bought uh, they bought on the lo- line like that. Like mm-hmm. they. They'll attack bait. I didn't know that either. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, come get some of that if you want to step out of the city. You know. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I love it though. Yeah, I did too. I I love getting into the madness. I you know I don't want to hate on it. I I mean I love wandering in. I love wandering around downtown with the camera popping into certain spots and you know i check in on y'all go to the blues spots and catch the madness and got to excite myself shake it up a little bit and you know and then just take it back home and get the zoom lens out and nerd away well it's a good balance of different things and if you want to go see like live shit like this town is so good for that man there's so much live performance going on there's so much comedy there's so much music yeah you know yeah it's great i like seeing the musicians watching the comics and the comics watching the musicians i like that i love watching music because i have no talent so it's (laughs) i love watching a thing where i have no talent in i've no i've never played anything so i watch i'm just like you're doing magic up there like look at these guys doing magic i brought a guitar for you and at least we're gonna teach you how to play an e chord before i get out of here okay I'll, i'll try yeah, I'll try it. I just, I've never even tried it. Well, that's the problem. Is that the problem? No, the problem is. Here's the problem. Okay. I know my brain. Oh. And my, I have a dangerous brain. I can't. My brain can't get to interested in things because oh. then it's all in, and then it's like fuck eating. Let's do this all day. Mm. I so I've learned through all my years how to keep that wolf in a cage mm. and not to let it out. So that's why I don't play golf. Got you. Because. I'm addicted to pool. It's a real problem. Okay. I play like a I can play like a hair under professional speed right. when I'm on. When I'm really on, I've been practicing for several hours. I could run. I ran three racks the other day. Three racks in a row. That's big. Four and a quarter inch pockets. Yeah. See, that's the problem. Like I get like that with music. I would get like that with anything. I get yeah. like that with golf for sure. I see Jamie. He's a full on junkie. <laughs> he's a full-on junkie. He's got a, a simulator out there, and I'll come here and like when I pull the car up, he's driving balls into the simulator and ma- mapping it out on a fucking computer. He's obsessed. Oh, obsessed I, with I, his I, club speed. He's got a fucking killer drive too. You like set up to the whole sensor thing and. Uh, it reads, I don't. I don't have all that yet. Like, uh, it's yet. coming. He says it's yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, 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 so, I've got some cool stuff on the way. I think. <laughs> I've watched it get you though. That's what's interesting. Like when we first met, you were not into golf. Like how many years ago did you get into golf? When we got here. When we got to Austin. Yeah, yeah. So four years ago. So in four years, he's become a stone cold junkie. Got you. So is Hinchcliffe. Stone cold junkie. Ron yeah, White. Yeah, Ron White's a junkie. Just. It also caught a lot of people that the, the whatever the pandemic did, the, the golf bug went around. It was one of the only things you could do then. That's not when I was playing, but that's right. what it was. But yeah. It happened. seems to me like. It's one of those things that once you do it and you you do it and you start getting better at it, you just fucking love it, and then everybody becomes an addict. I, I know very few people who dabble in golf. You know, a lot of people, they'll play pool a little bit here and then, but they don't get, like, fully addicted. Golf people get just addicted. I don't get that. I'm scared of that, too. I get that now. 
un, you know, understanding your own brain. I don't, I don't gamble. That's it. I don't play yeah. golf. Yeah. Any of that because it's over for me. Yeah. It's it, already a problem with these stupid cameras. My wife is like, you're not a fucking, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but yet you are. Yeah, yeah. You are. You are whatever the fuck you want to be. I'm obsessed. Yeah. I don't like people telling you what to do. Mm. That drives me nuts. Mm. When I hear people telling you what to do and tell about giving you advice on music, just shut the fuck well, up. Everybody shut the fuck up and just market whatever he does. Yeah, it's, yeah. well, yeah, right? I just did it. You, you sell it. But, you know, the thing is, is... uh the, it's, it's, it's not people telling me what to do. It's meetings and mm-hmm. suggestions. Right. So I'm translating it as people telling me what that to do. That is what it is, suggestions. though. Suggestions. It's as much as they can do. As much right. as they can tell Gary Clark Jr. how to make music, they're going to give it a shot. Well. You know? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just annoying. Exists in comedy, too. Yeah. They're always telling comedians, do this, do that, dress nice, do this, do that. Yeah, yeah. Stop talking about COVID. Stop talking about this. Yeah, do sure. this. You know, you lose 5% of the audience when you do this and 10% the like, Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Yeah, I was in a conversation the other day in New York talking about a set list. And you should put this in this order and do this. And just, I was like, you know what? Y'all talk about it. I don't talk. I don't want to. I, I, I'm leaving this conversation i'm gonna go up on the roof i'm gonna put some smoke in there and then i'm gonna do my fucking show like yeah. chill out you know shut the fuck up <laughs> telling you how to do a set list oh it's funny it's a funk it's a funky business you know it's, they're but, all like that gary yeah yeah they're all like that tv was like that when i was on uh, news radio it was maddening because mm-hmm. here you have this guy paul sims this brilliant writer from the larry sanders show all these amazing cast members it's incredible writing staff and then you have the network it's, you need a wacky neighbor, you know. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You needed this. You needed that. You know, we need to have a hot girl that Dave's interested in. It's, there was always something like, stay the fuck out of this. Yeah. Stay out of this. Yeah. But they can't help themselves. Yeah. And you have to listen to them because they're the executives. They're the people that have the money. And like, right. Oh, okay. And you love doing the art. Exactly. You know. So it's this weird relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one of the best things about comedy is you don't really have that relationship with anybody anymore. We used to have it with TV, but now that's all gone. Yeah, you can, you guys can do whatever you want. Yeah, I was telling uh, you know, a couple of guys I, when I show up to the comedy spot, I, you know, you guys are nice enough to give me free drinks, and so I take advantage, <laughs> and then I start to, <laughs> I start, to, I start to going off. Man, you guys are the real fucking rock stars. You can just do whatever the hell you want. Nobody can tell you shit. You just go. You just go. And uh, but I mean, it is true. You know, it's you guys got a freedom that, in, at in a creative space to say whatever you want at any time, and and uh, that's cool. It's inspiring. You know, it's fun. It's, it's especially at that place because <clears throat> that place is, you know, made for us by us. Yeah, sure. And it's all ours. We're the only ones who own it. That's amazing. No, nobody owns it but us. It's it's like everybody else has to listen to us. That's never been the case. It's always been there was an owner and the manager is hired by the owner and they give you the rules. Yeah. So the rules are now like I go in the green room. Well, what do you guys think? And everybody just starts giving off opinions. I think this. I think that. I'm like, yeah. okay, we'll do it that way. That's cool. We all agree. Okay, we'll do it that way. That's amazing. So because of that, we've been able to just have it like a real safe haven. It really is like a mothership. Yeah. Because everybody there goes and travels and does the road, but they come back home to home base. They yeah. come back to the mothership. That's how you build the community. That's yeah. a prime example. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like everybody who comes here is looking for that too. And so then when they get it and they realize, oh, this is real. Yeah. Like, this is real. This isn't just like, a, everybody wants that thing. You know, like, oh, I wish there was a place we could go. We all just hang out together and every night just do shows and everybody's creatively inspiring everybody. And then once you actually have it, you're like, oh, my God, it can be real. Yeah. It can be real. Because yeah. we had it a little bit at the store. We had it a lot at the store in yeah. L.A. But we also had owners and, you know, who were great. We had managers, we had Hollywood agents would come. There's always people's managers hanging around. There was all these, there's a lot of other stuff there, you know, and then there's also the Hollywood feel, which is a different feel because what percentage of those people out there in the audience are in the business, like a giant chunk, at least half, Mm -hmm. at least half those people out there in that audience are actors or writers or producers or executives or someone who does something that has to do with the business. Out here is just folks. 
Yeah. It's just folks. Yeah. It's better that way. It really is. It's, it's just people who just love the shit. Yeah. It's just fans, just comedy fans who just have all kinds of different jobs, all kinds of different things they do with their life. And they yeah. just want to come out and have a good time. It's awesome. Yeah. And it's just, it's magical. It's very cool. That's, for me, the absolute best thing that came out of the pandemic. Number one, moving here. Number two, being able to set that place up. Yeah. Well, I, th I mean, as a, as a fan, I think that's one of the best things that come out of the pandemic, too. So here's cheers to you, man. Thank you. One year. Thank you, sir. Yes, indeed. Mm -mm. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Ooh. It's exciting. We thought about doing one somewhere else. But I was like, you know what we really should do one? We should do one for like the summer in Montana. Just find some fucked up town in Montana, have people fly into it, just do a mothership in Montana. Montana would be amazing. <laughs> I love Montana. <laughs> Montana's amazing. Montana would, yeah, that that would blow up, dude. Yeah, we're, Tony's like, don't fucking do it. Don't go to, I'm not going to Montana. I'm like, come on. And Duncan was like, I'll get a house in Montana. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Montana's beautiful. Duncan's thinking about doing mushrooms in the fields, staring at the stars. I, I, I'm with Duncan on that. Yeah. I'm with that 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, that'd be cool. You're thinking about expanding? Possibly. Just, uh, that was the only thought. Like, just, just buy some land in Montana, some weird town in Montana, yeah. and just put a mothership just up. Drop the mothership in the middle there. See who comes. <laughs> <laughs> it get interesting, man. Now, Montana's yeah, it's got some funky, cool folks it, out it there. It does, but you also have a lot of people that travel. That's what's interesting too. That's one of the things we found out about this spot. It's not just like people in Austin that are coming to these shows. Yeah, it's people traveling from all over the world. So it's like you could make it's almost like a little Vegas residency type yeah, deal. It's become a destination. It's about, yeah, that's about us. Yeah, if you could do that to a small, funky town in Montana, you only if you only had like 120 seats, you could get a lot done. Make it better. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be out there trying to learn how to fly fish, and I'll, I'll drop in on you. Fly fish is, is kind of fucked up because they let those fish go most of the time. I, I, well, the, Which is what a weird. The hippie in me gets that. I get that too, but the, the hippie in me says, well, why catch them then? The hippie in me is like, well, you're just fucking with these fish. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like you're just trying to get the juice, that feeling that you get when you catch a fish. Yeah, that wild feel. Oh, I'm, gu I'm guilty. I'm ah, guilty. Me too. I've done it. I've done catch and release, yeah, especially absolutely. bass fishing. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean everybody catches and releases. Yeah, absolutely. I got a, you know I got a little spot out of my house, and we catch and release every now and then. We'll fillet them up, catfish or whatever, fry yeah. them up and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's just hang with my kids and learn how to. You know, be patient. <laughs> kind of teach him how to just chill out. Like, yeah. Wait for something. Yeah. I know. When is the fish going to bite? Yeah. When, when is the fish going to bite? You, when you shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Chill out. <laughs> then, you know, then no, no come. But yeah. Yeah, that's my next That's my next quest that I'm probably scared of because a buddy of mine, Jacob Skiba, he's a uh, guy I work with in the studio, producer, engineer. Um, while we were recording, he went out and uh, it's gone on a couple of fly fishing expeditions and he's kind of hooked. And so I'm, he's like, you got to come out there with me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next thing you know, <laughs> I quit playing guitar and I'm the guy <laughs> fly fishing with the big zoom lens out there in Montana <laughs> waiting for the mothership to open. Yeah. That's the thing is like when people say that they get bored, I'm like, how can you be bored? There's so many things to do. There's so many things to do in this life. Absolutely. There's so many things to get interested in. You know, how can you be bored? To me, it's like my problem is the total opposite. I just, I just can't have more things You're right. that I'm interested in. Yeah, I, I I I I like to get to a feeling where I'm bored, or feel like I have time to be bored because I can, you know, invest my time in certain things like photography, or you know, it gave me an outlet to go chase something down. And uh, for better or for worse, I feel like fulfilled, like I'm learning a new skill. I'm challenging myself. It's, it's, I'm never satisfied. There's mm -hmm. so much to know. Right. And there's right, so much to right. do. But I'm like a hands-on guy. So it's like, you know, if I'm bored playing guitar, I'll 
try to figure out something on piano if I'm bored playing piano. Like, I have bagpipes. Yeah. I don't know why I have bagpipes, <laughs> but just in case I get the time to get bored, maybe I'll figure out how to play bagpipes. Yeah. You know, just weird shit. Well, it's something about learning a new thing that excites a part of your mind that doesn't get excited any other way. Sure. Because once you already know how to do something, then you're just kind of practicing that thing that you already do and you're very comfortable with it. It's a normal thing that you do. But when there's a new thing, it's like, what? How does this work? What's this lens? What happens when I turn left? Oh shit! Yeah, right. And they're like, okay, what is the aperture? What does that mean? Like, what's exposure time? How much? What is it? So at nighttime, you set it different. Like, what the fuck yeah. is it? Yeah, and yeah. then you start getting into the books and into the weeds, and you know, I got like that with archery. I nerded nerded out hard yeah, yeah. archery, so I know so much shit about archery. Yeah. But there's so many layers to that too. Like there's people that like my friend John Dudley. I'll talk to him about that. I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. Right. He's talking about torque lean and you know, torque setting bows and like what torque tuning. What? I've I'm I've got a uh, my brother in law is really into bow. I think I hit you up and I was when I was over there in Australia. He was like, oh, yeah. hit up Joe and ask him what kind of bow he's using. You know, yeah. So, but yeah, he's really into that. My mom's real into archery. Really? Yeah, my mom, my my mom. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you out there. My mom doesn't mind being in a smoky room. She started playing drums, and she's into archery now. So wow, yeah, yeah she's she's out here getting it. Playing drums and shooting bows and arrows. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really badass. That's badass. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, archery is an addictive thing too because at the moment when you're aiming at the target and you're at full draw. It's impossible to think of anything else. It requires so much concentration that the world goes away. And you have this like insanely narrow fo focus. The insanely narrow focus is the place where you want that arrow to go. And I, all these different things have to be in order. Your scapula has to be aligned. Your elbow has to be high. Your right arm has to be pulled back. Your left arm has to be locked and stabilized. You have to release your hand so you're just pushing with the palm of your hand. No movement of your hand whatsoever. And then you have to relax the shoulder somehow while extending fully. And all the while, you have to fight anxiety. You don't want to pull it quick. You want to make sure you just get it locked in there. So when all that is going on, there's nothing else in the world. Like if I'm... I got a lot of things on my mind. I'm too busy. I'm too this. I'm stressed out. I just go out there with some arrows, and then within 20 minutes, I feel great. It's like, yeah. Pop. My only time to think about other bullshit is while I'm walking over to the target and get my arrows. Yeah, yeah. Right. Pulling the arrows out, and then back to what I was doing. Start sprinting to that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I could just keep firing target and never have to go get the arrows, yeah, there would be no thinking at all. I get that. I, I can kind of relate that to playing guitar in a way. You can't, in order to, to you know, it's kind of a precision that your hands got to work in sync and coordination and, and you got to be precise with it or else it kind of all falls off the rails and you can't really think about anything else. It's not like you can be on the phone and play guitar or something you can send emails back and forth you can't really be in conversation with people you just have to be locked in to execute yeah you know and and you know which shots are better than the others you know which chords are played stronger than the others you know which notes are are, are gonna sting you know what i mean it's like that's the note you know bullseye motherfucker yeah i can kind of relate in that way you can't it, you can't it's like flow state. Yeah. Check out. You know, you got to be there. You have to put in 100% or else you're not going to be great. I know? think that's a, there's a lot of things in life. I think there's a lot of things in life that people gravitate towards because I think there's a great value in having a thing that takes the rest of the world away. Mm -hmm. That thing could be golf. Look at this for Jamie. It could be anything. Whatever it is. But there's a real value in having a thing that takes the world away. I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name would have been. Uh, I have had a lot longer rap sheet if I hadn't found guitar at a young age. I think, you mm. know, just being lost, confused. So many people out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I hadn't found martial arts, oh god damn. <sighs> I have no idea what would have happened to me. Hmm. It was the only thing that I had ever done that made me feel like I wasn't a loser. 
I was like, all of a sudden I found a thing that I know that yeah. I can do. And if I just go all in. So when that's why I have like this problem with addicting, getting addicted to things. Because that was like the first one that I really got really addicted to. And then it just sort of like transmuted. It changed just the way I interact with everything. Did you have a good experience off the bat? Did you notice that you were like a winner immediately? Not and immediately, but pretty quickly. And that was I had the kind an of draw you back for in? it. I just, it was a, I, I understood it. Yeah. I understood like distance. I understood like how to hit things hard. There was like, and then it was the exciting thing about it. Like you're, mo there's moving targets. They're moving at you. You're moving at them. Like this, like solving this puzzle of, of human reflexes and instincts and yeah. flinching at them and yeah. fainting them, getting them to react and then gauging what that reaction is going to be different ways to set things up it's like it's so multi-layered and multifaceted. and when you're young you're so fast like you can move so quick it's exciting you learn so quick too sure you know yeah so it's just you see instantaneous reward because if you're learning something while your body is growing it's the best because your body grows into these movements. Hmm. So your body has like a built-in way of doing these things from its, like literally from the ground up. Once you're a grown man and you try to teach a grown man like kickboxing, that's like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, you're just, like, so accustomed to doing certain <laughs> things with your legs. Yeah. You get these grown-ass 30-year-old man legs, yeah, and I'm yeah. going to try to teach you how to throw a spinning back kick. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, that's why uh, I haven't signed up yet. <laughs> 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 it's worth doing it just for fun, though. Sure. And it's that's another thing. Like, when you're doing that, you ain't thinking about if you're sparring or if you're, you know, doing jujitsu training, you're not thinking about anything else. You cannot think about anything else. You're just fully locked in to this thing that you're doing. Yeah, that makes sense. Man, I wish I'd uh, grown into my uh, body while playing basketball because I'm six foot four and a whole waste of space. <laughs> I have no skills. <laughs> I have a 15 foot jumper that I'm pretty confident in, but I have no handles. I'm like, you know, I, I, I just, it's a waste. People ask me, you play basketball? Nope. <laughs> Didn't get that. And I tried, man. I tried. I had friends who had the shoes where you could, you know, like to build your calves for jumping. And I was out there doing drills, I had those walk around things. with weights and all that shit. Yeah. I was really trying to get there, man. Like, got no hops, no court awareness. It just wasn't <laughs> my thing, bro. I'm like a deer in headlights on the basketball court. It's embarrassing, bro. But, uh, yeah. I, so I try and get out there with my kid now. He plays basketball and I'm, I'm struggling. My knees are popping. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-year-old reality. Yeah, man. Like, damn. damn. I didn't. Yeah, that that wasn't my forte. But hey, you can't be everything. No, you cannot be everything. And if you try to be everything, you'll be nothing. I agree. Yeah, you just—it's not. You got to pick lanes. Sure. You can have a couple lanes, but you can't have too many. And each lane will take away from the resources that that other lane has available. I agree. I agree. That's, that's why I try and tell my wife all the time. Like, I can't focus on that right now. Yeah. I'm trying to stay in my lane. People, though, don't have to do that, don't understand it. Like, sometimes people come to me with, like, business stuff, and I'm like, I, this is not, I can't talk right now. Yeah. I'm, I've got shit going on. Sure. I'm busy. Like, yeah. Let's talk about this when it's absolutely necessary and never a minute before. That part. Yeah, yeah, say it again loud for the ones <laughs> that didn't have the volume up. Yeah, eventually we could talk about this, but not now. Seriously, man. They'll, they'll try to talk to you about important shit right before a show. Like, <sighs> this is so crazy that you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't even understand what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really. That, yeah, yeah that's, that's one of my biggest, that's one of my biggest uh, issues with doing shows. Um, and And there's like some sort of you know, business element involved. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're out just on the road with your touring crew or whatever, there's not that, those conversations, it's not those talks. Everybody kind of gets it, right. reads the room. Then you have folks that come in and go, hey, I was thinking about this idea with this company. Uh, and it's like, and the tour manager comes in and goes, five minutes. And it's like, I'm trying to get my monitors on. I'm trying yeah. to warm up my voice. I'm trying to, you know. And they're just 
selfish. Yeah. This is yeah. captive. You're yeah, a captive yeah. audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, get the fuck up. I finally got you alone. I want to talk to you about this cryptocurrency. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's part of it's, it's part of it, I guess. It's just it's weird and kind of funny if you think about it. It is kind of weird. It's just you know, what's well, all these different personalities are interacting with each other? You know, you have the creative personality, and you have all the business people and the people that are support team. Yeah, there's, there's all these. It's it's an odd relationship. Yeah, you know, sure. Bus- it, whenever you mix business and art, there's just two totally different mindsets. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's uh north and north yeah that's why people get real suspicious if an artist gets real business oriented starts uh, opening up a bunch of businesses and mm-hmm. gets all businessy mm-hmm. people are like oh what are you doing yeah. what do you i want you to be an artist yeah right yeah mm, yeah that's well, what i like about you dummy yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what i like about you i like yeah. that you don't know anything just... i like that you're out there just being wild yeah have a good fucking time just Nah. Have a bunch of people that do that shit for you, man. Don't nah, get involved. That's the that's the scary part. When they start saying, "Don't worry about that. Just be yeah. an artist." It's like, "Nah, right. motherfucker. Yeah. I'm gonna be at your office tomorrow <laughs> early in the morning." <laughs> Let me see that spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Well, that's a true. That's a that's a story as old as time. The artist that's been ripped off. They yeah. Didn't even know they were getting ripped off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely true. Mm-hmm. It's. You know, I, there's there's things that I've had to learn in the in the business, you know, um, not to get into too much, but yeah, there's definitely things that you aren't looking for or looking out for, and people don't necessarily tell you because you're not able to be in those rooms to right. have those conversations. So things kind of slip by you. It's like you and your homies trying to figure this out. Yeah. You know, it's like your your boy who's an attorney who. You know, went to UNLV, but doesn't know anything about entertainment law. It's like, you know, doing your contract. It's oh, like, no. oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. So there's just things that 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 you gotta figure out, but you just gotta keep your eyes and ears open and, and ask questions. The and, worst and, one is when someone has a like legit manager, and then their friend is like, "Bro, I could be your fucking manager." Uh huh. And you're like, "Yeah, man." You know, you're like a brother to me, man. I trust you. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's that's that it. one goes sideways fifty percent of the time. That's it. Five zero. Mm-hmm. You got a one, <laughs> one out of two chance of that thing going completely sideways. Yep, absolutely. And so many guys go that way. You know, oh, Mike's managing me now. I got a new manager. Yeah, right. It's my wife. My wife's managing me. I'm like what? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get a professional. Yeah, absolutely. Get somebody who knows what the fuck they're yeah, doing. Absolutely, man. You, that, 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 all that bro shit, you know, that, you know, things start to get funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that relationship starts to get funny, but yeah. That's I, also I how that. dudes develop entourages. That's a wild one. Man, speaking of entourages, I had to talk, I had to just tell my, <laughs> my dad is gone crazy. Oh no! I love my pops, but I mean, he shows up to my shows, and this dude all of a sudden is sitting courtside at Spurs games. <laughs> he shows up to my shows with like thirty folks, thirty deep. He's got a table at the Moody Theater. He's living his best <laughs> life. He's just squatted up around town. People talk to me about him all the time. My dad is out here getting it in Austin, Texas. It's pretty funny. Wow! But yeah, he's like my pops is a superstar out here. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good. He's having a good time. Just having fun. Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, you know, it's it's definitely enjoying uh, having a, a kid who's known around town. You yeah, know, that's good. Oh man, he must be so proud. But yeah, he's 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 getting a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> Showing up 10, 15 deep. Entourage. Hit me up. Hit me up. Hey man, can you get me into this uh, spot? How many people you got? Oh, a couple. Yeah, yeah. When Dave rolled, when Dave Spell came to the mothership, he came with three SUVs. <laughs> He's got he had like three Escalades filled with people. <laughs> Where do they go? How do you fit anywhere? Oh man, he's got family. He's got friends. He's got fellow fellow comedians, musicians. Like he just travels with people. He loves it. It's like a party yeah. everywhere he goes. I get that. 
Yeah, I understand that. It's he's, a lot. He hasn't managed well. He has good people with him. He yeah, knows he, he knows what he's doing. But it's like the way he's got it set up is it's pretty fun. It's yeah. just it's all just every day's a good time. Get a get a IV, <laughs> vitamin IV yep. drip. <laughs> yep, I, I, I was around for that. Yeah, I was, I was around. Yeah, we actually. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely around for some of those fun times. It's, it's good hanging with those, that crew. Yeah, but that's a that's a dude that was an entourage. That's yeah. entourage. I get that. Yeah, I get it. Um, but yeah, I could never be that guy. I like to roll solo. I, I like to just kind of. Be on my, I can make my own decisions. If I want to yeah. pivot, go left, I can go left. If I want to go right, I can go right. Yeah. I don't necessarily have to. Maybe that's selfish of me and kind of a lone wolf. No, it's probably thing, smart but. because it gives you time to think. I think the problem with Dave is he's so famous, he can't be alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, can't, yeah. You can't just show up somewhere. He'll, all of a sudden, he won't be alone. It'll, there'll be a giant crowd of people like, yeah, oh, abs- my God, absolutely. Dave Chappelle. They'll, they'll just go crazy. Absolutely. I can't believe you're real. I get that. Bro, can I take a picture with you? And then I get the every now and then uh, dude who plays guitar. He's like, man, I've been watching you for, you know, since I was a kid. Or the, like, really drunk, like, older lady who <laughs> wants to, like, kiss on me, you know, while I'm <laughs> hanging out waiting for some to-go food or whatever. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of my... Mm. That's that's my interaction. That's good. That's a good level of interaction. Yeah, it's not a too... certain level, like a Dave Chappelle level, I think it becomes unmanageable. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I was having a conversation with Cat Cat Williams about that. Like he, I asked him to come to the club. He's like, I, I don't do clubs. Like, I was like, nervous being around all those people. Like they're too close to me. Ah, I was like, you got too famous. Yeah, you got too famous. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to have an entourage. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get that. I get that. That's a perspective that I don't know anything about. You yeah, know, I'm just speaking from a dude who, you know, a small community of music folks. Yeah, you know, I can move around, but um, it's perfect. Yeah, it's pretty good. Where you're at, perfect. I know it's it's, a, it's good, but I want these people to buy millions and millions of records <laughs> and fill up arenas. <laughs> you know, at the same time, right? Exactly. Right. So I think I've kind of, you know, fucked myself. I was like, I should have gone like the Gorillas route or like Daft Punk or something like that, where you. Know, in a mask, or you know what I mean? <laughs> you could just show up anywhere. That's true, right? Gorillas can just hide. Yeah. Kiss had that forever. Sure. You right? know, I remember when Kiss took their makeup off, everybody was like, <gasps> What year was that? Like the 80s, I think. Yeah. I think it was the 80s. It was Kiss Unmasked. I couldn't imagine. Like, yeah. oh my God. They used yeah. to be able to go around town. So they would go out. And like they would like, I remember Gene Simmons was dating Cher, and he would go out, but he put a bandana on like he's during COVID times. All oh, right. Yeah. So I was like, oh, we almost got a picture of him. So it was like half blurry pictures of someone's side of their face with their hand up. That's all you got to kiss. Forever. That's cool. I I kind of miss those days of that mystique. Is that a comic for it? Does that really look great? <laughs> yeah. See how he's wearing the bandana? That's how you used to go around yeah. town. He used to wear a bandana. You know how ridiculous that is. Is nineteen eighty? Yeah, I think yeah. That's I was cool. in, I was like going into high school when they did that. Oh damn! <laughs> what a crew, man! What a wow! They didn't Talk get the love that they deserved because people had already thought it was corny to have makeup on for some reason. They didn't have real hit records that were like they, their songs didn't play on the radio that much. If they played on the radio, it was rare. You don't think so? Well, I. I I kind of grew up as Kiss being a household name already. Yeah, well, they were huge. They sold millions of records. They sold out arenas, but they weren't getting love on the radio. Huh. It was just fans. And there was a thing that were like people would be embarrassed to be a Kiss fan. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You'd well, be embarrassed. Other kids would make fun of you. Why? Because you like those idiots with makeup on. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, bro, Kiss is the shit. <laughs> that doesn't even seem like a thing now at all. Now it's not. Yeah. But you have to realize, like, in the 1980s, it was a thing. Right. Yeah, people would mock you, that you huh. if you're in a kiss. Damn. And then they became cool again. They became cool again somewhere in the 90s when they started going on tour again with makeup. 
Right. So they were going to do like one last final tour, they decided, but that was bullshit. They just kept going. Everyone Once does a last <laughs> tour. So last, 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 last. That's those marketing guys. I'll tell you what, Gary. Yeah. This is your final tour. This is what we're going to say. It doesn't have to be your final tour, but we'll sell it as your yeah, final yeah, yeah. tour. Yeah, we're going to milk the shit people, out of this. People moment. are going to love it. They're going to be <laughs> yeah. very excited to go see the last time. Gary's going to become a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just really gotten into photography, and we're going to have to respect that. Yeah, we're going to have to respect his wishes. But this is his last tour. Yep. Don't, Gary, don't quit. Yeah, don't right. go into pictures. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> don't, don't go, go into photography, <laughs> Gary. Don't do it. <laughs> but it's yeah, just. Right. Kiss, so Kiss came back in the 90s, and I went to see him with Kevin James. Me and Kevin James went nice. to kiss when they came back. We were like, this is amazing. Is that in Hollywood? I think it was. I think it was in L.A. I must have been saw crazy. It, in LA. it was incredible. Yeah, it yeah. was incredible. With the makeup on, all the shit. Fire. Awesome. Man, yeah. those guys really turned uh, rock and roll into, like, entertainment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was every single aspect of the show, from the costumes to the pyro, the time and the crazy antics, the just... I mean, and then selling it like this big, huge thing with the merch and uh -huh. the dolls and the crazy yeah. shit. It was like, I mean, it was, it was, they, they made it known that Kiss was a fucking thing. And they had yeah. the fans, I guess, to, 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 to push it. But I, that's. They had a one hour long TV show. Well, I don't know. That. Where it was like a movie, like a made for TV movie. It was Kiss and the Phantom of the Park. <laughs> I don't know. No, I was about like, this. this is, and in the middle of it, like three quarters of the way into the show, the fucking power went on at my house. I was like, no. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> I can't believe it's shut off. It just, the power shut off. I was like, this is so fucked. This is Kiss and the Phantom of the Park. It was like a real corny, made for TV movie. <laughs> How long were you waiting for this thing? <laughs> Well, when you were a Kiss fan, first of all, you had to find out from, like, the newspaper. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, Like, how did you even know? Or you had to read the TV guide. Like, sure. what? Kiss has got a movie? Right. And it was maybe the dumbest movie that's ever been made. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty dumb. It's so dumb. I need, like, look at this. <laughs> it's so corny. Oh, I mean, no. I might have to go back and watch it now. It's so corny. It's literally so ridiculous. It's so bad. So, <laughs> so they're out here whooping ass. What are they oh, fighting yeah, they, crime they were or what? They were superheroes. What? They became superheroes for a while. I did not know this. Easy, Catman. They are serious. <laughs> and they've got guns. This is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Oh, it was wow. so ridiculous. It was one of the dumbest movies that's ever been made. I, some of my I, my favorite shit to watch is the dumbest shit. So I this is so this. dumb. It might have been made by the Chinese. They might have done it to subvert American institutions. <laughs> They might have done it to try to ruin young minds I... and just lower the standards of what is acceptable to the point where, you know, they could invade. Uh, I, I mean, that's a power move for sure. That's, a, that's what they're doing right now. That's a power move. Oh, That's what they're doing right now with TikTok. <sighs> Man. I firmly believe that. I, Russia and China are just fucking us sideways. I, I'll tell you right now, man, I've been having conversations about you know, music and sharing music and the way to be on is, is TikTok. Like, it's the way to, like, get everybody to this yeah. crazy, fucked up, weird place. It's like, it's nasty in there. Well, it's something that people are not designed to manage. They don't know how to manage it. They don't know what that experience is. It's new to the human anatomy hmm. to have something that you're staring at, that you keep in your pocket, that carries 20 hours of battery life, and just flipping through things all day long, just giving a little tiny drip of dopamine every time. Bleep, bleep, yeah. Bleep, bleep, not much, just enough to keep you interested. It is flipping through that fucking phone all day long. It's changing the way people view things. It's changing what's acceptable. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've noticed that it, that it changed me when we were sitting down for a little while because I was just in my phone. Mm -hmm. That was the only way that I was getting information. I wasn't hanging out with people. Yeah. It and changes your anxiety levels. I, that's what I realized. I realized it, it changed my anxiety levels. I was not sleeping. I was drinking a lot more than I normally would mm. just because I was like overthinking shit yeah you know oh. that was COVID too though the isolation yeah. I mean, that's i'm not saying that this is what they did but if you wanted to do that if you wanted to t 
turn a population into a bunch of cowards, one of the best ways is to isolate everybody. Yep. Isolate everybody, get them scared, give them one solution to get out of this thing. Everybody else against that solution is the enemy, and they're going to stop us from getting back to normal. Oh, absolutely. And that's and that you could do that through social media, especially through Twitter, better than you can with anything. And it's just. It's just it's a weird way to get information. Just I I broke my phone once. I was in Hawaii with my family. And I dropped my phone. It just started making phone calls. Just it was, I would go look at this. I was showing my wife. I go look at this. I hang up. Call someone else. Hang up. Call someone. Just calling people. It wouldn't stop calling people. So I had to shut it off and I had to get a new phone. But it took three days for the phone to get there. So mm -hmm. for three days I had no phone because every time I turned my phone I would just start calling people. Yeah. So for three whole days I had no phone and it was. I was like, ooh, I feel so much better. And then, I, and then part of me was like, you know what? Fuck phones. You should just have a phone and have nothing on. Nope. Nope. Went right back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah. back to Instagram. <laughs> right back to Twitter. Right back to I YouTube. Know. I know. Right back to Google. I know. I, right back. I know. I did the same shit. One person sends me a meme. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's over. Yeah, you're back in the game, man. You, Someone sends me a funny video. I got to sign back up for Instagram. All right. <sighs> Let yeah. me see this. Oh shit! Yeah, I got your same problem. I, yeah. I got your same problem. I I gotta just. I have to consciously just leave it. In places. Yeah. Well, I have one phone that has nothing on it. I have one phone that has no apps. Doesn't have anything on it. So That's if someone nice. sends me, I gotta send a link to my other phone. Nice. And most of the time, go. I don't click that link. There's the hack. That's the hack. It at least has cut me back about 30% for sure. 30% of paying attention to shit. Unless someone says, you, you have to see this. This is insane. You yeah. know, okay. I could I use that 30%. It. Yeah, I'll use okay. up my 30% now. I'm going to use that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That way also you can cut down on the amount of people that have your phone phone. You got your phone, then you got your phone phone. Yeah. And the phone phone is like, this is the one that like 20 people have. That's the way to go. Yeah, I was doing that for a while. When I lived in New York, I was, I had, I was, I was doing that. And then I just got, I was wearing skinny jeans and I couldn't yeah. do the skinny jean two phone thing <laughs> and my wallet and my keys. It yeah. just it was ridiculous. You need to accept the fanny pack in your life. Well, look. <laughs> Ah, oh, the satchel. I've showed up with the satchel, yeah. bro. I'm, I'm converted. The satchel so. is the artist version of the fanny pack. The fanny pack is saying, I don't give a fuck. I'm the not fanny pack I'm is like, <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm a loser. I don't care. I do not care. I'm not ready for that yet, Joe. Well, in Texas, you see people carrying fanny packs. A lot of those fanny packs have guns in them, especially those big ones. Oh, yeah. Those I know where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely know where I'm at. <laughs> There's a reason you see that dude with a fucking Bass Pro Shop hat and a fucking flannel T-shirt on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. With that fanny pack? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't try. Origin boots on. Yeah, that dude, That's there's something in that. That's a heavy fanny pack. I just see them cats and I just go, Yeah. hey, <laughs> howdy, good day. <laughs> That's why I see people out here getting. I saw some dude getting road rage the other night at South by Southwest. Bro, bro, this guy jumped out of his car, ran to the car in front of him, started yelling at the driver. I was like, "Do not do that, sir. I do not want to watch you get shot." You got to They got to be from out of town because you can't do South by Southwest. You can't. Yeah, yeah. You can't do road rage here, bro. No, you cannot. No, it goes south too quick. People don't fuck around out here. They don't fuck around, and they also don't know you. They don't know what they they watch too much YouTube too. They're watching Absolutely. too much Instagram too. They're seeing all the fucking riots and craziness Absolutely. and people getting pulled out of their cars. Everyone's seen those videos of someone getting fucked up in a some sort of a road rage situation. Yeah. Any any sense of a threat, people are yeah. Hair trigger like real quick. Road rage in particular, because everybody's uh, people don't understand. That. I've said this ad nauseum, but I'll say it again. When you're in a car, you're hyper alert. Because you're going fast, there's all these things around you, and you always have to be ready. So your brain is at a seven already. Yeah. So when someone cuts you off, it's like, motherfucker! That's why, like, on the street, if someone gets in front of you on the street, it means nothing. Because you don't have to worry about crashing. Sure. There's no fear of this person stepping in front of you. It means nothing. Right. Like, I have no worry that I'm going to crash into this man in front of me, and we're both going to die. Right. But when you're in a car... And some guy changes lanes in front of you like, motherfucker, dude. What are you doing, bitch? Yeah. You roll down the window. You fucking idiot. And then you see him at the stop sign. You jump out of your car. Oh, dude. Don't do it. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm guilty of 
Yeah, I'm I'm in my I'm yelling at people in my car. As long as you stay in the car. I've, I but yeah, I I I'll will motherfuck somebody with yeah. the windows up. Yes. Right? That's fine. But uh normal. That's and then, normal and, behavior. Yeah, and then I get to the light and I just give them a look like Yeah. You know I saw what you did. I'm just acknowledging yeah. that I'm not down with the bullshit. Yeah. I just want you to know that I saw you. Yeah. I don't want no problems. Right. But just check, check. Come on, man. Check. It's a come on, man. Yes. And if yeah. it's a reasonable person, that person's like, what the fuck did I do that for? Yeah. If it's a reasonable person. My favorite, though, is when they just keep looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can feel this. I know you can feel this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting watching the Texas culture get invaded by the California culture. You can see it in how they drive. Yeah. The people that are cutting people off and, you know, f- rushing to nowhere. You yeah. see it in how they drive. I notice it. I avoid yeah. I avoid certain streets. Yeah. Based on that. <laughs> so I'm like, where the fuck did y'all come from, man? Well, well, that was South by Southwest. South by Southwest, basically like L.A. comes to Austin. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I stayed away for the most part. I had a couple of... Of, of events during South by, but I I love my city, but that shit has just gotten crazy, man. Those it's, festivals are nuts. It's it's wild. Yeah, you know, they, I I used to have this one parking spot that people thought was a was uh, a handicapped spot, but it was it wasn't. It was like right on the line, and I figured this out from years of spending way too much time wandering around on Sixth Street, and. I remember one year they took that spot away and I was driving around for like an hour and a half looking for parking. I was like, <laughs> fuck this place, man. This ain't my city no more. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Austin. But yeah, I was like, oh man, the game has definitely changed. Um, While we were driving to the club last night, we looked up, we saw five skyscrapers being built. Mm. There's five skyscrapers being yeah. built right now. Although I know all those folks who are building all that stuff, I, I know them. They're like my neighbors and shit. So they're like, come blow the city up and then come back to the <laughs> <laughs> go back to the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's so many it's apartment gone, buildings happening. being built. It's happening. Yeah, it's wild. I've never seen a city grow like this. I haven't either. I haven't either. But uh, I think it was inevitable. I mean, I think it was just one of them things. That, well, it's too good. Well, yeah. It's just too much of a gem. It's. I blame you a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I'm responsible. <laughs> Uh-oh, I know uh-oh. I'm responsible for at least twenty or thirty comedians. Yeah, no, absolutely. Which is um, which is amazing because, you know, that's my favorite shit. It's you guys being down the street. I can come hang. Um, but yeah, it's the the city has grown, um, in a way that is somewhat unrecognizable to me. Like everything that I kind of grew up on, grew up with, is you know all my spots I used to hang out. And are gone now. And uh, so I was saying something to my old man the other day. And he was like, man, shut the fuck up. He's like, I've been here my whole life. And what do you think that I think? What do you think that I've seen? It's just change is inevitable. If you look at pictures from 1836, it's not the same spot. Right. You know what I mean? So it's it's just, it's what's happening right now. It's a crazy time to be a part of it and see it up close, you know, because I'm watching my little town, seeing familiar faces. All of a sudden, it's like this new energy, there's new folks around there's new business there's a new business sense here it's a it's 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 cool and funny and funky it's just change happened i'm in the middle of watching it yeah yeah i was hanging out with elon at the very beginning of the pandemic whenever it was scared to be inside and uh i was telling him my plans to open up the club and all that stuff yeah and we were were just talking about austin he's like austin's gonna go supernova yeah yeah, he was right. Yeah, he was right. Yeah. Called it. Yeah, he called it. It's, but it's still manageable. It's still, like, the traffic is nothing compared to L.A. Man, I'm, I I like it. I like that there's new shit here, you know, in yeah. a city that I grew up in, and you're looking for some excitement, and it's like it comes to you. You yeah. don't have to go look for it. You yeah. Know? And just get in my car and come see some new shit. You know, it's... um. It's it's exciting for me. Also, it's all I, my favorite stuff happening around here, too. I think it's good. I think it's overall good. And also, I think that the people that are moving here are embracing this new life. 
they're embracing like a, it's a new city it's a new vibe new way of behaving people are more friendly mm -hmm. so i think people will adapt to that when people move to an environment they adapt to that environment you know they move to this town they sort of take up the energy of the town that and this town already has like an established energy yeah I, i'm a little i'm still concerned about the driving though because they're getting aggressive well, uh, yeah. Like, different. They drive different. It's a little different. Yeah. It's a little different. But, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you you move to a place that you love the energy, I, I suppose. And it takes a little while to adapt. I mean, I'm 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 just watching it happen. I'm watching it happen. It's, it's cool to me. The tech people I worry about more than anybody because they're not artists. Like, the tech people moving here – that what they've done to San Francisco, oh. like those people with that, those wacky yeah. woke ideas. I'm not even thinking about that. Yeah, that's that scares different. the shit out of me because there's a lot of them. I mean, look at that giant ass fucking building that they built. That's a Google building, right, or a Facebook building? Which one is it? Both of them. Which one's the sale? That cool the sale. Sales. Google. Google. Uh. They, they put a giant ass building right on the lake. <sighs> I don't even know if I noticed that. It's a giant ass building right on Cesar Chavez. But then they just fired like fifteen thousand people, so I think that place is mostly like vacant. Uh, what, did, did they just overshoot? I think they overshoot. That That's it. That's oh it. yeah, oh That's yeah, yeah. Dope. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a dope building. Yeah, um, so I think they overshot, and I also think um, the reality is AI is coming, and there's so many people right. that are working in tech that will not have a job in five years. Right. The job will be nonsense. That would be like, you know, asking a person to make steel beams in his backyard with a fucking a hammer and a pot. Like, right. no. Why would we do it that way? That's a stupid way to do it. Right. We have steel mills, stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Why, why would I let you make your own girders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's dumb. Sure. It's dumb. It doesn't make any sense. It's... Like, what we can do now, AI is going to be able to do better, more efficiently, much quicker, cheaper. Yeah. No hiring people, no worrying about insurance or any of that shit that you have to worry about with people. 401k plans. Yeah. All, all that, that shit's gone. Out of here. And this is something that Andrew Yang was talking about when he was running for president in, I guess it was 2020. He was talking about that. And he was right. He was right. That there's some things that are happening. Was that 2020 or 2016 with Andrew Yang? I don't remember. 16. 16. And, uh, he was very concerned even back then. So this is eight years ago. He was saying like AI is coming, and when it comes, that's why he was pushing for oh, universal basic income. Sorry, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. So that's why he was book um, pushing for universal basic income. He was saying, look, there's going to be so many people that there are no jobs. Like if you're a truck driver, yeah, you have ten years. In 10 years, everything will be automated. There will all be those giant electric trucks. Mm -hmm. They'll all be run by a computer. They'll never get in accidents, and they never get tired, and then you, you never have to worry about them doing meth and picking up hookers or going crazy, <laughs> <laughs> falling asleep at the wheel oh, and come on. driving into a fair. That's what makes the best cops episodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a world, huh? That truck driver world? Yeah. That's a world of wild folks. Well, you know, I, we we tour on buses and we gotta fuel up in the same places where they do, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a funky world out it's there. It's a funky world. A lot mm -hmm. of dudes on amphetamines, doing twelve, thirteen hour runs, just wide eyes, huge mm -hmm. pupils, mm -hmm. just listening yeah. to fucking conspiracy theories on the radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had one of them drive us. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, crash the bus. Oh, no, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not crash the bus, but, like, kind of ran the bus into a... He, he ruined the bus. He was all doped up and super drunk. And, oh, no. Yeah, and we didn't realize he was going through any of this type of <sighs> stuff. So we were leaving a gig one night, and sure enough, he pulled the bus, crashed it into the gate. Oh, no. I had to grab this motherfucker. So he was fucked up at the gig? Yeah. So he got fucked up while the show was going on. Yeah, I think he been, I, he'd just been going for, I guess, maybe a bender. We had a couple of days off, I think, uh, in a certain city. And dude was just gone, I guess. He just uh, got into it and said, fuck it. He just hit the <laughs> fuck it button. I was like, man, fuck all this shit. I don't care. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a danger, right? Because you're just trusting this dude, and it's not like you're going to drug test him every day. No. He's a driver. You trust him. He's a professional. Yeah, he's had, he's got a resume. People have hmm. recommended him for you know years and years and years. He does his job. You do your yeah. job. How you doing, Frank? Yeah. I'm going to sit down the bus. Yeah. Meanwhile, Frank is just... Gone. Uh, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah. Frank is on coke and tequila. Yeah. And, yeah. Ah! yeah, I've been at the hotel lobby bar just going after it, just all day long. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it shows up. He's like, hey, rides here. Oh yeah. boy. And he's like, like, I got this. Yeah, I got this. We just met him. I guess at the wrong time. Yeah. You, know, you could have caught him a month earlier. Everything would have been fine. Been cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's a but balancing yeah. act for a guy like Frank. <laughs> but I, you know, I think about those 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 truck drivers, man, and and you know, bus drivers who drive at all funky, weird times at mm-hmm. night. And, you know, it's a lonely life. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lonely life. If you have a family too, you're sad. Sure. You're set, your family's at home. It's twelve hours of driving to get back there. Mm-hmm. And then you're only there for a little while. And you got to go back again. Yeah, man. That's what kind of has been my problem with touring the way we've been touring is being gone yeah multiple times you know, for long periods of time during the year i only did that once i only did the the, the month thing once me yeah. and charlie murphy and john heffron we did this bud light real men of comedy tour once mm-hmm. well we did 22 dates in 30 days and sure. we we're just out basically every night wake up in a hotel room where am i yeah where am i i forgot where i am and after that, I was like, I'm never doing that again. I like Tom Segura, that crazy fuck. He'll do like 60 dates in a row. He'll mm-hmm. be gone for two months where he has a show almost every night. Yeah. And he's just going all over the place. The, his name, the name of his tour was I'm Coming Everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. But, you know, that's what he was doing. Yeah. Literally he, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. That's. Yeah. I, I mean, I get that. We. I would love to do just a weekend fly dates, do stuff like that. But I got a whole band and production, and my mm-hmm. band's getting bigger. And so, I, you know, that's like, uh, I, I've got to do it. But I've decided this time I'm just gonna bring my family with me, and just yeah, you know, have them grow up out on the road instead of. You did that for a while, right? You took your son uh, when yeah. you were when you were in Europe. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I took him out there. That's got to be a great experience for him. Yeah, it was great. It was great for him. Um, that little motherfucker just, he didn't want to play guitar, though, until he saw, saw Slash. I think I told you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I think I'd, I'd rather have them come out and hang with me this time. Yeah, that's safer. It's, yeah. like, more fun. You don't you don't get as sad and lonely, and oh, they yeah. don't feel weird. And then for them, it's an experience. Like, wow, I get to see what Dad's doing. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of just, like, FaceTiming them. Right. Yeah. You know, and picking up weird lingo from their funky-ass friends at school. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did you just say to me? Yeah. Did you just call me bruh? <laughs> 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 nah, you're coming with me. Yeah, my kids started saying cap. Cap and no cap. I was like, what? What do you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that even mean? I do you know, know what that where'd that come from? Well, I don't know. I don't know either. Times are changing. Yeah. Times are changing. But yeah, it's that's a better way to to do it. But either, like I it's a different thing with a band, you know? You yeah. got a whole band. You got a bunch of other people. Yeah. Like, you know, the crazy thing, we were just talking, I was talking to Shane Gillis and he was talking about his experience hosting Saturday Night Live and he's like, Saturday Night Live only pays you five thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. It's like you host it for a week. It's five thousand dollars. We're like, that's crazy. Uh, but then I talked to uh, Pat from the Black Keys, and he was telling me, he's like, you want to hear it even crazier? He was like, when you do a late night show, it costs you money because you got to fly everybody out there. You got a band. You mm-hmm. got hotels. You got this. You got that. Like it costs you fifty thousand dollars to do a late night show. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I just did a. I just did that a couple times. <laughs> Yeah, catch me on <laughs> such and such. Yeah, watch them shits. Buy the album. Uh, yeah, it's 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 funky, like the whole promo thing and and to do late night television. It's it's, it's how it, effective it, is it now? Mm, mm. Debatable. I I don't know. Uh, I I don't I don't know how effective it is. It's really. not what it I, used to. I don't be. I don't think so. I I, I mean. My, from my experience, the, the T 
TV promo, like certain ways that that were, I guess the only way to move, are not as it's not moving the needle as much. Maybe it's just for me as my personal experience. I think it's for everybody. But it's 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 not really moving like it used to. But it is still important in some capacity. I don't understand it, you know. But I'm a fan, so I, I like to go play the Late Show with Letterman. To go play the Tonight Show, it's like that's a dream to me right. as, as a kid. Right. You know, like I love to be able to do that, to be able to step in that building and play Saturday Night Live. Yeah, or do whatever. It's, yeah, it's like it's this thing, but it, it's you know you're investing in something where you're not really quite sure on what the return is. Right. But yeah. still, you, you're you doing it because you just want to do it. It's a cool milestone. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, in a record business, people aren't really, you got to be everywhere. Right. You know? It's, yeah. And, and you got to do that and also be your own promotion on social media, which is a wild thing. You know, it's, yeah, it's, and and people are leaning on TikTok. I mean, I have meetings with folks about, um, you know, what's what's the plan? What is the strategy? What are we doing? Well, we got to get traction on TikTok. We got to do this. And so I caught myself a couple times doing some goofy ass shit for TikTok, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't like this, man. <laughs> like I don't this doesn't feel good to me. Right. It you feels know? horish. It feels yeah, it feels horish. It feels yeah. it's not in my character. It's not yeah. my it's, yeah. it's, it feels fishy. It feels reachy. It yeah. feels it feels gross. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. and it's like, well, this is kind of what's happening in the business. And I'm like, well, I don't know if this is I you know, and these are these debates. Well, this is where it's going. I'm like well, that's why I'm going to go be a fucking photographer. You know, it's like, it's, it's, we, it's, it doesn't feel like it should feel to me. Right. It doesn't feel authentic. Not at all. Yeah. And then, and everything is, you can't film sideways anymore. Everything's got to be right. vertical right. for the algorithm. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck are we talking about? Right. Let's talk about some music. I feel like right. James Brown in it. <laughs> Isn't it weird that the shape of the phone dictated the way you hold it? It's wild to me. And that's what we're talking about in music business meetings. That's funky. Because remember, before TikTok became huge, Andrew Schultz had that thing that he was doing on Instagram. It was like, turn your phone sideways. So he was telling everybody, hey, turn your phone sideways. They turned their phone sideways, and then he had it that way. Simple. Simple. Right? Simple. Just do yeah. that. But you now it became all about the reels, and you got to be able to flip up from one reel to the next. So now it has to be vertical. And then it just keeps you going. It keeps you going. It keeps yeah. you going. It keeps you going. It keeps you going. What's going to happen if those foldable things get adopted <laughs> by everybody? Because I, really? I, I went into a rabbit hole last night. I got into foldables. Because I have one. I have a Z Fold Flip 4, whatever the fuck it is. What is that? Never used it. It's a Samsung um, foldable oh. phone. I was like, this could be great. I'll be watching YouTube videos, much larger, but then you're carrying this brick around your pocket. Yeah, it's yeah, like, right. And it folds. It's weird. The yeah. whole thing is weird. But eventually, like, I know a lot of people that have adopted those because they don't want to take a laptop with them. So if they have to answer an email, uh, they'll open up the fold so they can have a laptop set up basically in this 10-inch or 8-inch thing. Yeah. And they got this little thing and then it folds it and it's the size of a regular phone. Huh. So what are they going to do then? With the with the if that becomes like if Apple releases a fold phone, that's when it's going to take off. Because right now it's like it's only Android phones have that now, and you know that's only like a certain percentage of the people, especially like people that are, you know, like most of the social media platforms are they're made better on iPhones. Like sure. the apps are better. They're, right. they're optimized for iPhones. So if they start doing an Apple foldable phone, I wonder if it'll be a, a different thing. You could hold, yeah. Now you have to hold it sideways because everybody's doing sideways now. I don't. know. I, I, that's beyond my. Oh, but that thing is though, if a thing organically becomes viral, like if you have a song that you put out and organically becomes viral, there's no better promotion 
There's oh, nothing yeah. better. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody can share it. I go, oh, check this out. Yeah. I'll share it to friends. They'll share it to their friends. They'll put it on Instagram. They'll put it here. They'll put it there. They put it on Twitter. And then next thing you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you never know what that. You never know what it's gonna be, right? You can't. You never There's know no way to know. Be. Yeah, no Vegas. Way to know. You have no idea. Yeah, it's a lottery. It's crazy. Like some things hit, and you're like, how? And then other things don't hit, and you're like, how did we miss this one? You know, there's a song that we play all the time. Um, can't play it anymore because of YouTube. Now we're on YouTube. This is dude Johnny Thunder. He wrote this song, I'm Alive, from 1969. You ever heard this song? Um, Bro, we'll cut it out. We'll yeah, cut it out. Yeah. Jamie, play this song. Yeah. We'll cut this out so that people on YouTube, just go go look up Johnny Thunder, I'm Alive. So this is a 1969 song. What the fuck did they do to Johnny Thunder? How did that happen? What did they do to Johnny Thunder? I've never heard that. How did that, he not become a superstar? That's everything right there. It's everything. That's rock and roll, baby. It's amazing. And it's 1969. That is and rock and roll. And Johnny's not with us anymore. He's gone. Mm. So, yeah, cover song. How yep. did you find that? Uh, Brian Simpson. Brian Simpson came into the green room and was like, dude, you got to hear this fucking song. Oh, no, Damn. it was just written by someone else. Wow. Written, written, written by someone else. By Johnny Thunder. Yeah. It's also on a like Mountain Dew commercial right now. Wow. 1968 it was released. Whew. It's in a Mountain Dew commercial. Mountain Dew's been listening to this podcast, guarantee. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, man. Whew. That was incredible. How good is that song? That was I I that's like hearing Hendrix for the right, first time. Right. Right. Like that's a superstar. Like that's not just good. That's um, that changes your feeling. Your skin gets goosebumps. Yeah, I was You're going like, through it. I was going through I've a lot. I heard it a thousand times. <laughs> I still go through it. It's that was incredible. powerful. It's powerful. That guy should have been a superstar. Damn. Johnny Thunder should have been the fucking man. That's like my new shit. Is this another one? Tom, Tom Jones. Oh, this is the other version. Of is it. that okay? The other version sucks. Oh, I'm cool on this. No <laughs> yeah. disrespect, but no disrespect. I, I, the other I, I, version. I want that. I want the other version to be. <laughs> yeah. Resonating. The re that other version is fine if I didn't know that Johnny Thunder existed. But the thing is, if a guy can make a song like that, if Johnny Thunder can make a song like I'm Alive, how is he? That feel, I feel like you just got to get the right songwriters, the right people with him, and you got a fucking superstar. Yes. How did they fuck that up? If I heard that once, if I was like a music producer yeah, or yeah. an executive and I went, went to see this guy live and I heard that, I'd be like, sign yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Sign <laughs> him. He's the one, man. Twice. He's the one. Yeah. That dude's out there. He's out there. And no one knows. That, no yeah. one knew. And this is. I forgot we found this Bob Dylan quote before, I think. What did he say? Right, Bob right. Dylan, who heard Thunder's I'm Alive on radio, was asked by Rolling Stone's Jan Wenner that year if he was impressed by anything in the rock music scene and pointed to the song. Never heard of it either, huh? Well, I can't believe it. Everyone I've talked to, I've asked them, and they've heard that record. It was one of the most powerful records I've ever heard. It's called I'm Alive by Johnny Thunder. Well, it was that sentiment truly expressed. That's the most I can say. If you heard the record, you'd know what I mean. Yeah. Meanwhile, Damn. no one fucking knew. Oh, Samsung used it in 2015. Samsung used it in their advertising for the Galaxy S6 Edge in 2015. It was also used in the soundtrack of the 2018 film American Animals. Mm. Since the 1960s, Sunders has continued to tour internationally, but has regularly appeared on luxury cruise ships. Wow. Uh, in well, the Caribbean and elsewhere. He's, missed... he's dead, though, right? Uh, no, he's still, he's still alive. Oh, oh sh I thought he wasn't shit. around anymore. Gil Hamilton. His name is Gil Hamilton. He's 91 years old. Wow. Okay. Okay. I was under the impression someone told me he wasn't around anymore. Uh, Bro, let me tell you something. That don't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Nah. That's that. That's like, like a com like a comic like Kinnison doing that thing about uh, starving children ad on television. You ever see that bit? Uh. -uh. Kinnison had this bit about starving children on TV. Like you're at home, just making your food, sitting down in front of the TV, and Sally Struthers is on TV. Won't you please help? Yeah, right. You know, and he goes, he goes, instead of sending these people food, send them someone like me. Someone's gonna go there and go, hey, we just drove 5,000 miles where your food is, and we realized, what's that? the only other recording that he might have that, or not, there might be a few more, but it's doing a, a children's nursery rhyme he was convinced to do, like his first thing as Johnny Thunder. Here we go, loop, 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 loop
That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, edit that out. Uh, don't hit quite the no, same. I was for something. No, that doesn't hit the same. No, I'm Alive was the song. You just need to get the right songs with the dude. But if you, he could do that, like that's, you got magic. It's in a bottle. Yeah. Now you got to figure out how to, what's the formula? Like get some writers, get some really good songwriters, get, sit down with that dude and let him go. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just catch one. Whew. Sometimes you just catch a wave and you just go, man. Yeah. And you can't, you keep trying to chase that thing and it's just never the same. That is the craziest thing. The one hit wonder. That is the, that is the craziest thing. Cause sometimes those hits are bangers. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just one. Absolutely. Something you just catch it. I feel like if Johnny Thunder knew the right people, he would have been huge. Well, he needs a, uh, he needs a better PR team or something. But even Bob Dylan in Rolling Stone was talking about him and that wasn't enough. What year was that article? You know, it said that year. Nineties, so like sixty, or no, I'll see if it. It was that it year. Was. Wow. Oh, it was that year. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. Is that a race thing? <sighs> well, Hendrix popped. Oh yeah. You know, there was true. A James Brown popped. Like that's true. It just like doesn't make sense that that guy is that good. That feels like that's transcendent music. That transcends everything. That transcends culture. Like that's something that everyone will listen to. That's maybe, a, maybe you, it was a little ahead of its time. How? How could uh, that? Because it just it didn't. It maybe. But doesn't it sound like a hit? It sounds like a hit now. God damn! It had to sound like a hit back then. But it probably sounded like. What the fuck is that coming through the radio? I don't know, man. If you listen to Peace Frog, that's like the same time with the Doors. You know, there's like a lot of wild, funky music that comes from back then, you know? Did that hit radio at the time? Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Some things are just a miss. One of my favorite artists who I think doesn't get the light that they deserve is a guy called Arthur Alexander. And this guy was like Americana, songwriting, blues, country, all of it. You know, all Never heard one. of him. I've great, never heard of him. Great songs, great songwriting, cool, funky voice. You know, what's a song we should listen to? Uh, there's a song called Anna. Uh, there's a song called Go With Him. Uh, try Go With Him. Let's try that one. Well, it's the I think, same song. I think it's yeah. the same song. Yeah, just yeah. cut it out again. Yeah. That's a that song's a flex. Think <laughs> about what he's saying. Go That's ahead. total flex. Go with him. Go. If he loves you more, hey, I yeah. love you. But I'm if he cool. loves you more, yeah, I'm cool. That's a flex. That's Bye. A, I, I know girls like that. That's a very needy girl. And she's never gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. And you had just have to say, "Hey, whatever you want to do." Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think you're awesome. But whatever yeah. you want to do, <laughs> I think you're awesome. Yeah, it's but nasty though. There's some <laughs> some that you just can't hold on to. Yeah, you have to recognize that. It's true. That's you know, that's that's the blues right there. Yeah, go ahead. There's another one too. Uh, Shuggy Otis. I don't know if you know Shuggy Otis. No. Yeah, man. Shuggy Otis was one of them guys. Um, he's like psychedelic rock funk soul dude kind of i found these guys on the same trip my guy my buddy jay moeller who was touring with me at the time was listening to this stuff and uh it's it was just like i said psychedelic ahead of its time i think maybe 60 nine, 70 71 he put out a record called inspiration and Insp inspiration information yeah and it's just like you know maybe a chocolate couple of bowls <laughs> sit back and like you're going yeah um, yeah great artist but i mean not not as powerful as johnny, johnny thunder. thunder like that i'm alive is that's a classic damn yeah yeah man should yeah. be otis do you get this mostly just from other artists that just tell you about stuff yeah a lot uh, yeah that's that's kind of why i like to move around a little bit is i'm still of old school Hang out at the bar. Yeah. You know, hey, what are you into? Ah, I've been checking this out. Check this mm -hmm. out. You know, I still go into record stores and just go ask, what do y'all like? What are y'all listening to? Like, just turn me on to something. I don't care. And so they'll be like, hey, try this. And so I'll try it, and either I love it or I don't, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm just curious. Well, those bar conversations are underrated. Absolutely. 
Yeah. They're the best. They can be the best or the weirdest. And yeah. It's got, it's all of it. It's an it's an experience. It's You're an like, experience. Oh, wow, that's what you that's what you had going on in there? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I asked. My problem is I go to bars and everybody wants to talk to me about conspiracies. They want to corner me. Yeah. Tell me about the government. I bet. Ooh. I bet, I bet. How do you do you shake out of it or you Sometimes I just get in. Yeah. I just jump in with them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what do you think they're doing? How, how come Trump didn't release the Kennedy assassination files? Mm. Yeah, that's the big one for me. Yeah, I, I I got a couple of people around me who get in deep with that, and I I just have to. My brain hurts. Bro. I have to get out. That one's crazy. Uh, smoke break for me. That's Bro, the they, time it they is. They killed the president. <laughs> Absolutely. And they got away with it. Yeah. And one of the guys that probably killed him was on the Warren Commission. Alan Dulles. He's know. probably one of the guys involved in the whole conspiracy. There's so many people involved in that conspiracy. They wanted him gone. I, see, I, I can't. I don't follow that. I you don't want to. Don't do it. Yeah, that's, that's probably one of those things. Golf. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, it's just... worse because it affects everything in the world, and you realize oh, like yeah, that well, the that world part. is run by psychopaths. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I want to know all of it. Nah. So I, well. Uh, you know, it's like a balancing act. You should probably know a little bit. Of course. Just so you don't get sucked into the bullshit. Right. You know? Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 like I said, I got folks around me who keep me kind of in the loop a little bit. Mm -hmm. but it's like, you need man. a dedicated conspiracy analyst. Just one? Just one It can't dude. come from, it's just one source? <laughs> just one dude who's just like scouring the internet. All right. You know? All right. Yeah. Well, if you find somebody, send them my way. Alex Jones. I'll uh, send him your number. <laughs> <laughs> I just call him up and just let him go for a this while. This is what's going on, Gary. Thanks. This is a very, very scary time. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, if you, if you do go too far down that rabbit hole, though, that is no end to that hole. That hole goes to the beginning of civilization, and that's what's terrible. Absolutely. You know, the, the idea of what human history really is versus what human history, what actually happened, and what actually motivated all the things that happened. It's fucking terrifying. Well, yeah, I heard what you was talking about a few pods ago about you know the real history of and yeah kind of going deep into that i, I mean i uh, it was just it kind of blew my mind i was like okay uh, yeah uh that's it's, it's things that you've i've heard about but never really gone deep into or, or done research on you, you don't know? want to yeah don't go down just bar talks fine let yeah. someone <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. spit it at you at a bar. You go home a little freaked out. Yeah, you get too deep into it. It's just it'll ruin your life. Yeah, but I, I remember being a kid in bars. Uh, there, was, there was a few guys in particular who I don't know why they found that talking to me about this stuff was the thing. I guess they were trying to get the message to the youth. But I remember you know, in these smoky bars and going out back or standing out front, and these guys telling me about all kinds of crazy, you know things that i would never heard of and you know they're coming after you or they're doing this and such and such they did this and i'm like i'm 15 like i have to get up and turn in a school project tomorrow <laughs> you know, like, i don't know what the fuck you're talking what about. were you doing at a bar at 15 i was playing shows really at 15 yeah i was playing shows when did you first start playing live uh 98 i was 14 wow 15. yeah how did that happen um well i i was in a boy band with my buddy Robbie. We were going to be R&B superstars, we thought. And then he moved to France. My friend Eve uh, was playing guitar. We did a talent show in eighth grade, won like you know, 25 bucks, and we were kind of hooked. Went to a blues bar for her 15th birthday. Played at a blues jam like an open mic, you know? And they invited us back, and we just kept going. I started booking gigs pretty soon after. As a teenager, I was like this duo, like the Gary and Eve show. And it was like me and this girl uh, playing blues. Wow. And, yeah, so. 14. Yeah, 14. Wow. 15, what do you have to be blues about when you're 14? Uh, my girlfriend uh, left me for the lifeguard that she was working with during the summer. <laughs> Named Raul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my first, like, huh, all right. Isn't it crazy that we dismiss the pain of the youth, but the breakups when you're 14 are the hardest ones you ever experience in your life. Yeah, you don't know what to do. 
you have no idea what this is. Yeah. All of a sudden, your world's gone. Right. It all ended. And everybody in your world knows that your world is gone. Yeah. You know, walking yeah. through the hallways. Oh. You know, look at that sad motherfucker. <laughs> oh, she's with Mike now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And your boys are telling you, man, yeah. we, cut, we just got such and such, you know, tongue kissing over yeah. there by the gym. Oh. Right? Oh. You just got to sit and, like, take that math test. <laughs> Go through it. <sighs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she don't feel nothing. Nothing at all. She's gone. <sighs> out of there. Bye. Yeah, out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be with you anymore. Bye. That's it. Ooh. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Nah, but somebody told me when I was a kid, you know, too. What do you know about singing about the blues? And you really don't know anything, you know. Uh, or at least I, I, I didn't. Um, when it came to just how complex people are how big the world is right you know certain struggles like your little bullshit doesn't really mean anything it doesn't carry any weight compared to this compared to that right you know um but yeah man that still hurts man yeah that still hurts yeah people take their life they take their life and they get broken up with it 14 15 years old they take that's true that happens that's true i crazy your whole life's ahead of you it's such a mistake we definitely lost a couple at a young age because of just emotionally sure. being broken. Yeah, especially if you're already fragile. Sure. You know, maybe this is the only thing that you ever had in life that gave you happiness was this girlfriend. Man. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Like, they were depressed, and the only thing that gave them happiness is the love of another person. Hmm. And you thought you were going to be with that girl forever. Forever, right? This is it. We're going to have kids. We're going to be together forever. Nope. Six mm. months later, she's tongue kissing <laughs> behind the barn. <laughs> Some other dude's fingering her. No. No. And she likes it. She likes it. She loves it. She's so excited. She doesn't think about you at all. Not at all. God damn it. Not one bit. Get over it, Mike. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You're alone in your room listening to sad songs. In the fetal position, Ooh. just curled up, sad and shit. But if you can come out on the other end of that, you'll understand. And then the next time, it's a little easier. The next time, it's a little easier. And then you get it. Yeah. You know. And then you write a song like that. Like, if he loves you more, go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because there's some ladies that you will run into in this life that you are never going to hold on to. Absolutely. And if you can't accept that, I mean, maybe you can 10 years from now. Maybe they'll sure. change and you'll change and you'll meet up and it'll be better. But right now, mm-hmm. she's on a path. Mm-hmm. And that path, you got to let her go. Mm-hmm. You know, I love you. You're great. But if he loves you more, ta-ta for now. <laughs> ta-ta for now. <laughs> Enjoy it. And that's a flex. That yeah. song's a flex. It kind of is. Yeah, if he loves you more, go ahead. Uh huh. Huh. Yeah, it's a good flex too, because they don't know what to do with that one. Like, they don't. Oh my god. They don't. How did he say that? He, mm-hmm. If he, he said, if he loved me more, I could just go with you. Shook it. And then that guy's at home. The guy, the new guy's like that bad motherfucker. <laughs> I can't believe that's what he said to her. Yeah. He has her forever now. Yeah, and now he feels stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Because eventually, this newness that comes from this new relationship with the guy who loves her more. Eh, it's going to fade into, like, why are you always leaving your shit laying around? And how come you're always late? And, <laughs> you know, you said you were going to call at 5. You didn't call till 6.30. What happened? What's this? What's that? Let yep. me check your phone. Oh. And then next thing you know, she's thinking about that dude who said, look, if he loves you more, I love you, though. Mm-hmm. And then she calls him. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Nothing. Great to hear your voice. <laughs> You know where I'm at. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> you know I still love you. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, some dudes could have used that advice. Like, if he could give that advice to a lot, that's a strong move in certain circumstances mm-hmm. to preserve your sanity. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, absolutely. Because just because some people are fun doesn't mean you're supposed to be with them forever. That part is very important. Very important. Very just because you important. have a good time with someone doesn't mean they should be your one and only. Because... That that might ruin everything. Absolutely. I agree. And One. we all know dudes who've got just hitched to the wrong caboose, mm-hmm. and they lost everything. They, their life fell apart. And a Absolutely. big part of it is the complex interaction between two people. 
and some people just you, the, the the combination of you and them is not good. Absolutely, and it'll ruin everything. I I agree. I've had those. You know, it's like this is fun. It's a lot of fun. But that's but it. This is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the dangerous ones are sometimes the most fun. <sighs> unfortunately, for a short amount of time. But you don't want them raising your kids. Not at all. Mm -mm. Not at all. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. If he loves you more, ta ta for now. Mm. Out of here. <laughs> this thing is falling apart. Cigar? This is a real one, man. This is from Havana. Yeah, it is. You can tell. Mm -mm. Yeah, buddy, my, I went to London. Well, actually, my tour manager, Daniel, we were hanging in London. I had a few days off to just hang. Started hanging in the cigar lounges. And, uh, yeah, I've been kind of hooked ever since. It's one of those few places like a barbershop or like yeah. a bar where yeah. guys can get together and just talk. Yeah. Absolutely. Sit around, shoot the shit, smoke a stogie. Mm hmm. Talk yeah. some shit, have Absolutely. some laughs. Mm hmm. It's fun. Yeah, so it's kind of been my my new thing. I'm trying to get off these cigarettes, too, if I'm being honest. Yeah? Yeah, man. I got to do it. Gots to do it. You don't want to die that way. It's just a sad. I, I always said I would never smoke. And then, and then I saw, speaking of heartbreak, blues, man. I was. Sitting during South by Southwest, pissed off all these motherfuckers in town, and I saw this girl that I was, you know, was into, and she was hand in hand with some other dude, walking down the street, having a good old time. And this person I was sitting next to, I was like, "Give me one of them smokes." <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know. Next thing I know, here I am. Yeah, yeah. it gives you a wild head rush, though. Yeah, it is. The tingly feeling yeah, in your fingers and toes and stuff. The excitement of your central nervous system. The brain gets fired up for, from a cigarette. Yeah, absolutely. Different than any other form of nicotine. Like, different than cigars, different than Zins, different than anything. Well, it's not just tobacco. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. even if it is, it's like a, a, one of those natural spirits, is oh, that what they're yeah, called? Yeah. American spirits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just tobacco. True. But even those. But if you get like a, like a menthol or something like that, it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. the fuck is happening here? But yeah, I got to quit that shit. And so, How many are you smoking? Uh, I, I, I only really do if I'm having a conversation before a show that I don't want to have. Oh, really? <laughs> so it's like an anxiety thing? Yeah, like before like TV or before something like that. That's not too bad. No, it used to be maybe a half a, a day, a half a pack a day. Not yeah. nothing crazy, but I I used to back on roll them up in my Spurs. herbs, yeah. And so I get my tobacco that way. But there was a while where I was doing like a pack a day, and sometimes maybe more. Just you know, stress. I think you know, getting into this entertainment business and eyes on you and you know pressure and all that mm -hmm. type of shit. It's just like a nervous thing to just. Yeah. Remind myself to just breathe, you know, like take a moment and just like, you know, chill uh, out. Also, there's some, something about the cigarette that just gives you like some weird relief. It's just yeah. like a... Yeah. <sighs> that head rush thing that you get out of it is like a weird little escape valve. For sure. It's like a release valve. Just... <sighs> right. Yeah. When I don't have them, though, I don't really miss them. So that's kind of good. That's very good. You know? Yeah, I got into... um I got into blunts from Charlie, Charlie Murphy, when I was on that tour with him. Yeah. Because he would only roll blunts. And you, the com he's like, it's the combination of the nicotine and the weed. And I was like, oh, my God, he's it right. Is, it is good. It's a better combination. It's good. That's a good combination. Like, pre-show combination, there's nothing like a blunt. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I'm right there with you, but. A blunt and some music. Let's go. Man. Yeah. Psst. We've been getting hyped up to, uh, Stro Elliott does it for us every time. He's a member of the Roots crew, the legendary Roots crew. And he puts out these albums. May I? Yeah, get in there. He, he, uh, he puts out these albums where he mashes up, uh, like old school music and like his big fat ass funky beats and mm. sub sounds and stuff. And that's been the stuff that we listen to backstage. That's our hype music. Uh, Do you have a hype soundtrack? Um, yeah, we we did for a while. It goes anywhere from, I 
Yes, Rolling Stones to Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. To, yeah. Wow. To uh, yeah, like Stro Elliott to um, Anderson Pack. You know, so it's kind of all over the place. Mm. You know, kind of get everybody who's got their certain types of music in the mood and you know keep the crowd hype and keep them interested you know, yeah stuff like that but uh john d's backstage he's the guy with john d's on keys he's part of the kill tony band he plays on the road with me he uh he's always got the bluetooth speaker and he's always jamming something unapologetically it doesn't matter like mm. who's how close we are to anybody he's like biggie loud as fuck you know? <laughs> doesn't walk into the stage through the office at the you know at the venue um but yeah we we have a good time back then but there's something about that like walking with the music walking into a place bringing the music with you yeah absolutely it's i think that's the buffalo new york in him though too you know, the big boom box unapologetic you know tim's on new york hat nice don't, don't give a shit uh but yeah what do y'all listen to backstage well, when we do arenas, I always make a point to walk into I'm Your Boogeyman. Hmm. Casey and the Sunshine Band, I'm your boogeyman. <laughs> That's what I am. Like yeah. when we're getting ready to do a show, when we walk into the arena, it's always I'm Your Boogeyman. That's your walk on yeah. song? Yeah. Nice. And if we're getting a police escort to the venue, it's protect your neck. It's always protect your neck. That's a flex. Yeah. That's what's up. Man. Uh, what's that feel like? I've only had a, like a police escort while, it's a, while opening bizarre. for the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, this is so tight. It's bizarre because you're, you're driving through a crowd that's there to see you. Yeah. The first time I ever realized what was going on was I was with Ian Edwards. And we were doing a show in Dallas at an arena. And this was like one of the first arenas we did. Uh -huh. And, uh. As we're driving, I go, what is all this fucking traffic? This is ridiculous. We got to be there in a half an hour. And then I go, oh, they're here for us. Mm. This is our traffic. Wow. And then we start laughing like, this is wild. Wow. This is our traffic. Y'all did that. Yeah. We pulled up to the venue. I'm like, this is bananas. It's got to be a cool feeling, though. It's pretty wild. So the police escort is to try to get you through that. Of course. Well, you don't you get don't, swarmed. Or miss the show. Or, or miss the show. Yeah. Yeah. But there's just so many people. It's just when you, it's just something about doing shows with that many people. It's it's a totally different experience. It's so alive. It's so electric. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the music, like having a, a green room playlist, I learned from Dave. Dave used to come to the comedy store and he he, he had two boom boxes and he'd have them synced. And he put one on one end of the bar, one on the other end of the bar. He had ones that had like LED lights, they'd glow and flash and shit. Like yeah, yeah. Dave brought the party. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was like, This is my socializing. So I always just have music with me everywhere. I'm like, That's the way to do it. Yeah. Because wow. we would just hang out in the green room and just talk. But talking with music going on is way better. Absolutely. Yeah. You gotta get your way vibe. better. But yeah. yeah, that's right. When I, when I saw Dave at the um, at the Moody uh, Center recently, uh, he had the glow lights going on the mm -hmm. on the Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. Like the whole vibe's going. Uh, yeah, he puts uh, red light bulbs in his green room. Right. You go in his green room, it's not like bright white light, like flooding light. It's like the soft, cool like speakeasy vibe i respect that man yeah. it's, it sets up the vibe yeah it brings the club energy to like a fucking arena that's, uh -huh. you know, yeah it's, it's, he gets it yeah absolutely yeah he set it up right it's, it's the way to do it mm -hmm. it's the way to do it and if you're touring a lot I, I saw that with tommy lee once too i went backstage with tom back there's a <laughs> i got a story yeah, back yeah, yeah. my friend john rollo was uh tommy lee security guard john rollo's a big giant dude and uh, he goes, hey, man, can you meet Tommy? Tommy wants to talk to you about something. I'm like, okay. So I go to the show, catch the show, meet Tommy, and Tommy wants to fight Kid Rock. Tommy's like, I want someone to train me to fight Kid Rock. I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> they were both just squabbling over Pamela oh, Anderson. Oh, right. So he wanted to fight Kid Rock. So he was like seriously coming to me. 
to ask me like how he could get a fight set up with Kid Rock, and he wanted to get trainers and all these different things involved. You, uh, what, how, uh, I, was, I wanted to tell him, I think Kid Rock will fuck you <laughs> up. <laughs> Kid Rock is one of those wild Detroit white boys. Uh, you yeah. don't want to fuck with Kid Rock. I, I absolutely would have to agree. You don't want none of that? Nah. No. Nah. Listen to me, Tommy. That's a mean dude. Yeah, just... That's the dude that shot up Bud Light and cost him $26 billion. <laughs> he shot the shit out of that beer, didn't he? <laughs> he went crazy. He cost them so much money. <laughs> they they would have never lost that amount of money if Kid Rock didn't shoot that beer. Man. That the, just watching those bullets every time those bullets hit that beer, that was like a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I watched that on repeat. That was good. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You don't want none of that, Tommy. Nah. You just go stay, just, stay away from that yeah, dude. Just sit down. Just sit down. Yeah. Just just if he loves you more than me. Ta ta for now. Yeah, just Arthur Alexander, that yeah, shit. Big you, dog. Yeah. Learn how to just let it go. Mm -hmm. Again, same thing. Some gals, you never really have them. You just got to accept it. Enjoy yep. your time. Enjoy yep. your time with them. Exactly. But don't go having a cage fight with Cape Rock in front of the world. That's. What's up with everybody wanting to fight in public? <laughs> <laughs> What is up with that? It does seem silly. <laughs> right? Well, I think some people, it's just like they don't have any money. And someone comes along and says, hey, you want to do a celebrity boxing match? And you're like, all right. And, you know, they're going to pay you a million dollars. Now now you got money. So you're just like, I'll just do anything because you don't have nothing going on. So there's people like that. Remember, didn't Aaron Carter fight Lamar Odom? Yeah. Oh, I believe so. Lamar Odom's like 10 feet tall. Yeah. Aaron Carter looks like he had never worked out a day in his life, and he's been living on a steady diet of pills. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I, that just... He's not with us anymore, right? Aaron? No. No. That's, R.I.P. RIP. Yeah, that's that's a thing. If you get famous when you're young, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Man. Nobody. There's like three people that have ever gone through being famous when they're young and not been crazy. Yeah, I... I, I I don't, uh, I don't understand that, uh, I don't understand that. It's just, it's fucking sad, man. Uh, it's, you, it's robbed childhood <sighs> for other people's entertainment. It seems like when you're, when you're a kid watching other kids on TV, it seems like a good time. Right. You know, it seems like, sure. oh yeah, I want to do that. That'd be amazing. Mm-hmm. And so it's been it's been kind of strange to watch these uh, young folks kind of go through it. Well, the ultimate yeah. is Michael Jackson. That's the ultimate. I mean, that's the ultimate. That is absolutely. the the greatest worst story ever told. That when you see young Michael Jackson when he was with the Jackson Five, when he did like ABC and they were doing that stuff on TV. And he's dancing and singing. He's the lead, and he's the little kid. That oh right my there, god, killing the best. Oh my god. This clip in particular is the one that got me into wanting to be a musician. In the Ed Sullivan show, and how old is he then? Ten, <clears throat> maybe eleven. Sixty-nine. Jeez, nineteen sixty-nine. Oh my god. So good. Oh my god. He was so good and he was so little and then he became so crazy because he just never had a real life. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, that, it's sad to see. It's crazy, but it's just that, it's that old expression, the star that shines twice as bright lasts half as long, you know? I mean, it's just like, and then that, in that circumstance, to, be, to have that much talent and that much success and that much love when you're a baby he's a little baby there he's 10, 11 he just 11. 11 i couldn't imagine he's a little tiny little fella and he's up there just bolting out beautiful songs and then the rest of his life is just chaos i didn't realize that i think uh I, I, as a kid i was such a huge michael jackson fan probably like crazy kiss fans that i didn't realize everything that was 
happening. Nobody knew. You know. Nobody knew back then. Right. I mean, back then there's no internet, right? And so, True. like, if it wasn't if Barbara Walters didn't talk to him about like, why do you have so many kids over your house? Like, there would be no conversation. No right. one would know. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just a. Uh, I don't. What do you think that is? I mean, like, what is it? Like, is there a? It's just like a sense of like powerlessness, not having control. There's a uh, bunch like of a, factors. Oh, you, you never face real adversity like a normal person does. You're never not loved. Yeah. And I think people have to learn how to, you learn how to get people to like you, but you realize like, oh, if I'm a nicer person, it feels better for me, it feels better for them, it's good for everybody. Right. Like, and then one time I wasn't nice, and then I felt bad. And I went home, and I got to think this through, and now people don't like me, shit, I'm sorry. And then you get better. And it's like a process of learning how to interact with human beings that's completely subverted by fame yeah where all you don't ever have to prove yourself you, you not only do you not have to prove yourself you're loved above and beyond a regular person so you're treated like you're like a god like royalty as a child huh. and everyone around you is kissing your ass and everyone around you is giving you advice and everyone around you is trying to take your money you know mm. and then you've got women and you've got networks and you got you know that right. guy, the colonel that was with Elvis, you know? Oh, man. You those kind of characters that are running your life behind the scenes. And, mm -mm. Oh, Elvis is another case. Too much fame. Nobody had navigated those waters before. It's too much. I remember try, uh, being young and uh, people trying to approach me for deals and stuff. And, and uh, I was always weary of those folks just because of the stories that I heard. Mm. And uh, my mom is, was my manager for the longest time. Was, you know, helping me with printing up CDs and, you know, doing a real <laughs> ground work family. My little sister was boxing CDs and, oh, wow. you know, and uh, helping fold T-shirts and do all that. It was a real family thing. And folks started coming around and saying, hey, you know, we could help you with this. We could help you with this. And I was just always like, no. Nah. No, no, no. I've heard so many stories of yeah. of that. So I was really scared of the the business, you know, and, and wanting to even pursue it or the idea of fame or any of that. I was just like, nah, just That's I don't I don't I don't want to deal with that. Whatever comes with that I don't think is yeah. really me. So I'm kind of fortunate that I didn't really get to I didn't really move around in that kind of scene until I was twenty seven. How old were you in like numb? How old was that? I was, I was t mid twenties, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. That ought like to be when things started getting weird, right? Like yeah. bright lights, big city. Yeah, 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 all that. But I was a grown person, so I'd had experiences where, you know. Was, yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, so yeah, I think if had that happened to me any earlier, it would have been a little bit different. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know? But uh, yeah, it was, it was strange, you know. Uh, just how life can kind of flip. Mm -hmm. People's perception and perspective of you kind of flips. The whole world people, changes. People have like people you know kind of look at you different, and it's like, yeah, whoa, that's yeah. weird. That's right. when it gets weird. Like yeah. people have known you for years, and now they get nervous around you. Like, why are you nervous around me? Man? Yeah, right. It's like, hey, yo, dog, chill. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what's up? <laughs> you have the same dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You remember you crashed in my house six yeah. months ago, like. Well, I think, don't you think that's why, like, a lot of famous people hang around with other famous people? Because mm -hmm. they're like, these are the only people that are going to understand what it's like to be weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Tony the other day, and he was like, man, you need to get out more. I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you need, you need to be with the folks who get it. I was yeah. like, yeah, I know. I've just been a hermit in this studio trying to get it right, but yeah. Well, dude, calm down with the mothership any night you want. I come hang to. out. I definitely, I'm definitely going to. It's a great yeah. hang. I know. That green room cleans the soul. I mi yeah, I missed you a couple of times I've been there, but yeah, it's definitely a vibe. I, uh, yeah, I have a good time every time I'm down there. But yeah, it's, it's true. You got to be able to hang around like-minded folks who, you know, yeah. Kind of the weirdos. Yeah, that, there's yeah. a different perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to be around other weirdos. And it also is like you feel like you're okay. 
Like, oh, I'm not that fucked up. I'm just like these people. This is a different kind of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they get it. Right. All my friends know me. They get it. They get We're all just different kinds of weirdos. Absolutely. But what's a, it's a special kind of weirdo, a weirdo who makes stuff. Right. Yeah. Weirdo is always creating things. And, and uh-huh. then people go to see those things. You know, they listen to those things. They hear those things. They watch those things. That's, right. It's a different life. Completely. You can't hang out with accountants. They're not going to get it. Oh, it's different. It's funny, like going to kids' birthday parties. Yes. It's like, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I can say here. Or I know. What I can, it's like I never know what parents are gonna ask me about. You know, because like too many parents listen to the podcast, oh, yeah, which yeah, gets yeah. real weird. Right. <laughs> they want to talk to me about guests and conspiracies and shit. And <laughs> some parents, like, I took ivermectin too. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this blown out birthday candles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of dads want to talk about UFC, which is easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easy. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, man, that was really cool to, when everything was shut down to go to the UFC with you guys. That was and, fun. And hang out. I never, I realized how intense that was without the crowd. Yeah, it's wild, right? In the right? building. Yeah. Like hearing somebody get kicked in the face in mm-hmm. a quiet room, mm-hmm. that shit is different. It hits different. <laughs> it's my favorite way to see it to this day. Yeah. I like to see fights at the apex. The Apex in Vegas, yeah. like where we went. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. just like, there's no crowd, yeah. man. It's incredible. It was cool. And like, then when we went down there, everything was totally shut down. So they were like world-class fights. Like right now they do at the Apex, still have world-class fights, but a lot of times it's like guys on the come up, guys who are making their way through the rankings, and they'll have like contender fights and good fights. Mm-hmm. But there are like world championship fights in that arena. Like Francis Ngannou beat Stipe Miocic yeah. in that arena. I was there for that. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. When you see Francis hammer fist an unconscious man Woo. after he knocks him out cold and then fucking drops a bomb on him and is just walking around the cage. Like, yeah. Woo. And there's no one there but us. Yeah. That there was, was like 20 people in there. That's incredible. It was, was amazing. Incredible. Hearing the coaches talking back and forth. Yeah. Hearing the language, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was like. What a weird time, too, right? Even when you went to restaurants. Like, wow, we're in a restaurant. Yeah. We're sitting down inside. This is crazy. Yeah, you know? through the mask on. <laughs> you could, we still had to walk in with mask on, <laughs> and they'd take it off yeah, when you sat down. It was yeah. so stupid. As long as you sit down, you can take your mask yeah, off. Right. Oh, but when you go to the bathroom, you got to put your mask back on. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm just happy to be out. Yeah, hell yeah, me too. Yeah, that um, the COVID bubble days were strange, but yeah, I'm so happy the UFC did that. They kept the sport alive. Yeah. Are y'all doing the um, the sphere out there? Yeah. They're doing an event at the Sphere for Mexican Independence Day. Amazing. Have you been yeah. out there for that? I have not. I've seen it. I've drove by it. It's incredible. I mean, they have it look like um, uh, the earth. They have it look like space. They put designs on it. The whole outside is a giant screen. It's an incredible building. Yeah, that's wild. And they're going to make a show that uses the Sphere. Dana said he's only going to do it once. He's going to do one show there because it's too crazy, but he wants to do a show there just because it scares the shit out of him because it's so challenging. Well, of course, that's kind of he just he, yeah. He's not he has to. But you imagine watching highlights on the ceiling. That'd the, be crazy. The ceiling is filled with a giant screen that shows you replays. That would be incredible. Yeah, that's I can't even imagine because it's blown my mind when I see um, video of the band U two. Yeah, in there. Yeah, like it looks crazy on your little phone screen. I couldn't imagine what that was like. Being Bert in went. There. Bert Kreischer went and saw U two there. You and he said it was insane. He said it was insane. It's like, it's the greatest show I've ever seen in my life. I was I crying. Because it's like accentuated by the building itself. It's the only time where a building makes the experience way better, like way crazier. What was the, who came up with that idea? Like what, what the a good hell? good question. So, like who even? Super rich dudes. Because <laughs> <laughs> it costs some insane amount of money. How much does a sphere cost to run? It's something bananas. Like just for one night? Yeah, just for one night. Like every year, it's like, it's fucking hundreds of millions of dollars just to run it i wonder what the i wonder, I wonder what the what else is going to be in there just music i guess i guess you could have the rodeo <laughs> you could have whatever you want in there a rodeo would be fucking nuts. that would be wild <laughs> that would be wild the rodeo with all the highlights on the screens but to be able to watch fights like that have the highlights on the ceiling it's probably the best way to do it if they could keep doing it that way i mean if, the, if it works and then they decide you know what Fuck it, we're gonna keep doing shows here. I want to go to one. Yeah, I want to go too, just to see. Yeah, the one that's on Mexican. When is that one, Jamie? September, I think, right now. Yeah, 
That's going to be nuts. That is that is going to be a nutty experience. I think that's September 16, right? Am I correct? Sounds right. Mm, okay. Yeah. Hey, September 16th. You hear that? Touring squad, let's end up. <laughs> let's end up in Vegas let's that end up night. In Vegas, the yeah. night off. Yeah. How long are you touring now? Are you gonna? Are you from here when the album's out? Are you gonna just go? Uh, so we're doing, we're doing a U.S. leg. Just kind of jump, kick things off in May, and then we're gonna do Europe. Um, August, September, I think. I try not to look, um, but I'm sure dates will fill up in between. That's, you know. Once it starts going, it starts going. So, mm. um, but uh, yeah, just just for now, we're gonna be doing the states in May. Uh, we're doing some stuff with uh, Eric Clapton down in South America. Oh wow! And that's always cool. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a lot of people coming out to you know sixty thousand, oh, wow. seventy thousand folks. Wow! Know? So we're gonna get to. Jump in front of that and make some noise for a little bit. Bro, they came after Eric Clapton hard during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. They came after him because he said that he got injured by the vaccine. Yeah. And they came after him hard. How dare you? How dare you, you piece of shit. Right. They tried to find every terrible thing he's ever said his entire life. Take oh, it yeah. out of context. Oh, yeah, stick it oh, in yeah. front of everybody. Oh, yeah. Folks came monster. after me. It's like, what do you think about Clapton doing that? <sighs> Well, the crazy thing was he got injured by the vaccine, and they were mad that he was, and it was like a coordinated effort to attack him because he was going to cause vaccine hesitancy by telling the truth. Right. And now we all know it's the truth. So now no one's mad at him anymore for that. But it was like during that time, they were trying to destroy Eric Clapton. Yeah, if you brought anything, you said anything, you were kind of out of there Yeah. at that time. Yeah, that must have been wild for Eric because his whole life he was beloved. I mean, he was he was an icon. Yeah. I mean, he still is. Yeah, he still is. But yeah. But I, to have that experience happen, like all of a sudden he's attacked, like the LA Times, you know, and all these different newspapers were just coming for him. I was like, this is crazy to see. He's telling you he got injured by experimental medication that the whole world is being forced to take. You don't think you should listen to him? Yeah. Um, yeah. That, I, yeah. Looking back, it seems absolutely absurd. It does. That, that, that somebody's telling you that, that the truth about this thing that's affecting the whole world. And they go, nope, nope, yeah. nope, nope, nope. No, he's a piece of shit and an yeah. anti-vaxxer. Yeah, and look at this. And you did this. Yeah. And you did this. Yeah. Let's pull this up. What would you say in 76? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, wild time. Wild times. <clears throat> Fuck. <clears throat> but we got through it. Yeah, we did. I don't think it'll ever happen again. You don't I think, think so? I think people would be too wise to it now. Yeah, there's too many people that push back now that, that let it happen back then because they believed it. Yeah. They thought two weeks to stop the spread, that'd be good. They thought all those things were going to be good. They, they believed the World Health Organization. They believed the CDC. They believed everybody. They believed in masks. They believed in social distancing. They believed in all that shit. We turned out to be bullshit. And now people know it's bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. I remember going to Australia twice. We had to quarantine twice. Sit up there. Australia was nuts. Police escorts. I was going there to do a film. I went there to do Elvis. And I was like, uh, they put us, a police escort to the hotel, like, uh, military escort up to the hotel room. And you're just there. They give you, like, milk, <laughs> sandwiches, some juice, some fruits, like, every day or whatever. And Can't go they, nowhere. No, you couldn't go anywhere. And if you were to step out to, like to put your trash outside like a military guard or police officer would be there like with the weapon like turn the corner and, like just checking on you it's like yo what the fuck man how crazy yeah is that? for two weeks you had to be there and, how crazy is that yeah, and you weren't even sick wasn't sick which is crazy nothing and just 40 floors up in some crazy hotel you can't go anywhere for two weeks the military making sure you don't leave your room yeah uh, yeah that's what happens when there's no guns when people don't have guns, that's right. The, yeah, that wouldn't happen. The only happen. people that have the guns is the army, and the and the police, and yeah. everybody else is unarmed. That and then the people happen. with the guns start pushing people around, arresting people for not wearing a mask outside, right. throwing them, throwing old ladies to the ground, and handcuffing them. Like, nah, 
that shit yeah. that shit does not happen in in Texas. No, nope. Gary, damn, tee <laughs> no. that. Nah. You no. said you said what, motherfucker? Yeah, <laughs> shut the fuck up. But even in California, there was lines around the block at the gun store. It got sketchy. Mm-hmm. It got real sketchy. That was the eye opener. Yeah, for so many people seeing lines at the gun store for the first time, like yo. <laughs> This is getting real. Mm-hmm. This is getting real. I heard about that. Yeah, oh, it was weird to see it in L.A. I drive by Burbank and this gun shop that I know. And it's a fucking giant ass line around the block. People trying to buy a gun. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't got them problems down here. No, there's no problems down here. No. There it is. ID. Yep. Here <laughs> here's, you go. Here's your receipt. Exactly. <laughs> Good luck, sir. What's <laughs> yeah. well, even crazier is that I could just give you a gun. Oh, yeah. If I have a gun, I'm like, Gary, take this gun. And that's your gun now. You yeah. don't have to do any paperwork. No, yeah. nothing. Now you have my gun. That's why I, I kind of really fuck with Texas, though, a little bit. I love Texas. <laughs> Once you feel that freedom, and it's not just the gun thing, it's kind of everything. Once yeah. you feel that freedom, except abortions. Once you feel that freedom, you're just like, whoa, this is how you're supposed to be. And then you mm-hmm. go to California, they don't, you have flavored vapes. Like what? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't understand why. I don't understand why that is. They think it's gonna stop kids from sucking on vapes if they're not flavored. So adults can't have them. Adults can't have them. You can't because get flavored Zins in in California. I went to a gas station to buy some Zins. I'm like, what flavors you got? They go, we don't have any flavors. I go, what? Yeah, California doesn't allow you to have flavors because it attracts kids. You think the kids are going to gonna puff on the original version anyway? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? They're still smoking cigarettes. Like, yeah. that's so stupid. Wow. That doesn't do anything. I don't get that. That don't make no damn sense to me. It's communist. It's, it's uh, the government deciding what you can and can't do and doing it for your own good. And that's the slippery slope of communism. They'll mm. do that with that. Next thing, they'll do it with your car. Next thing, they'll do it with your, your uh, consumption, your carbon consumption. They try to get you to be on a carbon consumption tax. They try to get you to be on some sort of an app that shows how much carbon you're using. Anything they can do to try to control you. And they'll do it under the guise of making it safer for others, just like they did during the pandemic. See how quickly they shifted from vaccines to climate change. It was just oh, like, yeah, yeah. it was a beautiful passing of the ball. It was like, run with climate change. Run with CO2 production. Run mm-hmm. with stop eating meat. Drive an electric car. Run, run with that. Right. Yeah. And That's then, true. That's one thing after another. It's just control. The, the, the number one thing about it is control, and then all, all, without a doubt, there's a bunch of people making money. There's a bunch of industries that are designed that function around this idea that you have to do certain things, and they're going to profit immensely from you complying. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you could kind of see that in the way that the city changed around here with the they shut down certain spots, mom and pop shots, mm-hmm. spots kind of went and it's like, all right, bullet, get you up out of here make you comply a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 yeah, uh, now uh, you're gone. Now Target we, makes yeah, more money. Yeah, here, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Well, they, they crushed L.A. L.A. is not, it is a shadow of itself. I always say that L.A. is like a girl you used to date and she was really cute. <laughs> and then you go see her now and she's on meth and she works for the cartel. You're Damn. Like, what happened? Damn. That's L.A. Mm. You know? Yeah, it's, I, I, I haven't spent too much time out there. I mean, I only go out there when I absolutely have to. It's sad. I need to. I was just in New York. New York looked kind of Euro now. <laughs> it's got all the cannabis yeah. shops up everywhere. everywhere. It's kind of comical. It is. A little bit. It was so illegal in New York for <laughs> so long. Yeah, you had to get it like super low key. Yeah, man. You could get busted. There was undercover cops selling people weed in New uh-huh. York. Yeah, New York was weird with weed. Weird for the longest time. It seemed, it's it's not a problem at all anymore. No. It was really strange to be there. It's kind of like Amsterdam looking. Mm-hmm. So. I'm kind of surprised that it hasn't hit Texas yet. I'm surprised they haven't let legal weed here yet. It I mean, seems so stupid to stop people from doing something you know they're already doing is not hurting anybody. Yeah, uh, that's kind of that's my only beef with Texas at the moment. Yeah, as far as that goes. Well, it's decriminalized. Air quotes here. So, what does that mean? Nothing. Just I just 
just let me pull up to a store. Yeah. Get a receipt. To a store. And enjoy my day. Yeah. I'll pay taxes. How about that? Right. You, you're missing out on billions of dollars in tax revenue, you dummies. Sure. Because, like, in Colorado, they were smart. They said, we'll tax it, like, 39% or something crazy. And oh, everybody's yeah. like, okay. No problem. Yeah. Go ahead. Do that. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's so cheap in comparison to alcohol anyway. It's it's a beautifully run business in Colorado. They it figured is. it out. It's yeah. Like, it's like going and buying a pair of shoes. But for the longest time in Colorado, they had to employ mercenaries. They had to employ, like, fucking Blackwater type people to guard the cash. Because they were the banks wouldn't fuck with them. Oh so, yeah, that's so right. they weren't allowed to use credit cards. So at any that's point in right. time, they had hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars in cash around. That's right. And so they had to like get a guy to take that cash to the bank. So they're basically like like a scene from Heat. That's right. I remember going out to Venice Beach at a certain point. And it was a little funky out there. Well, I used to go to this place called the Inglewood Wellness Center in the '90s. And uh, that was when there was medical weed in California. And all you have to do is go to a doctor and go, I got a headache. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. They go, here you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you definitely need this medicine. Yeah, they were trying to hand out those things. It yeah. wasn't hard to get a medical license. Not at all. And one of the only dispensaries, medical dispensary, was in Inglewood. So we'd go down the hood to buy weed. And then the dude that sold me the weed got shot. He got shot there like a week after I was there, or two weeks after I was there. Damn. Like, oh, no. They robbed him and shot him because you had to pay in cash, and they had cash laying around, and everybody was scoping it, and they were watching, and they knew what was going on, and he would have given them the money, too. That's right. They just fucking shot him. That's right. Yeah. That's a wild time. That's so I was like, okay, time to go back to weed dealers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just hit homie up. Hey, man, do you know yeah. what they, Like we used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the weed dealer thing is funny because you, then you get those sketchy people in your life again. Those dudes that are willing to sell weed, like th those are, those are always people that are just a little unbalanced. I uh, I've been fortunate that, you know, folks I used to hook me up with all these cute girls. That's amazing. Yeah. How'd you get that? Mm -hmm. Just being me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a way better situation. I used to deal with a dude named Jake the Snake. <laughs> well, there you go. Jake the Snake was my friend Eddie's buddy in L.A. That's how uh, we get our weed. Yeah, but he was always a weird dude. And I was always cool. It was like cool hippie chicks. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. That's perfect. Cool, sit there. You know, mm -hmm. show you what they got. You can try a couple of different kinds. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Get on their bike or whatever the fuck and get out of there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sundress flowing in the wind. Yep. Yeah. 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 Fucking sunflowers all over their outfit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I didn't really deal with too many shady characters. But the shadiest characters that I knew were the motherfuckers that I actually really knew, that I grew up with. And I was like, ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I was warned about you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when you have some dudes that are shady when they're like 14, just yeah. a little shady. Yeah. And then by the time they're like 22, they're full shady. Oh, yeah. But you're still hanging with them. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple of them. There's this magazine around here. I don't know if it's still here. It's called Mug Shots. And you can see, like, whoever got arrested that day or that week. Oh, <laughs> I've no. seen a couple of folks I grew up with on the cover, and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that coming. Yep, that pans out. Yeah. Yeah. But so, hopefully Texas will come around, and, you know, you can just kind of do what you want to do with that. Or, yeah. I feel like if Republicans just embrace that, it would be a lot better for everybody. Just the people that don't want it, they're just ignorant. They just don't understand. It's stupid. It's a stupid thing to stop. That's not being stopped. Yeah, it's not being stopped. Also, you should probably fund some studies, find out why some people go crazy. Let's find out what's going on because everybody knows one dude who smoked too much weed and went schizophrenic. <sighs> I, yeah, absolutely. How many you know? I know one in particular is a great, great friend of mine. And, uh, yeah, I kind of feel semi-responsible. Mm-hmm. Because I was kind of, he, he was this dude I've known since I was in first grade. We played basketball together. We did all this stuff together and started rapping together, started playing music, making beats together. And I think one puff too many and listening to that 
Slim Shady Marshall Mathers album. <laughs> <laughs> Got him, bro. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I know two dudes. One dude seems to have bounced back, but one dude's gone. He's gone. Well, actually, I know three dudes. I know one dude who bounced back too. But one dude, the, the dude who I know who bounced back, he doesn't he doesn't fuck around at all anymore. But at one point in time, he thought the government was listening to everything he said. He thought like helicopters were flying over his house. He thought people were listening in the walls. He he was he was going nuts. And that's marijuana dudes. Yeah, yeah. For him, it was. Hmm. And I knew him before that. I knew he was fine, but he was just waking bacon every day it was every day he was just getting obliterated he was getting obliterated all day long and i think he just fried normal life out of his brain Ooh, yeah Ooh, i've gotten like stoned to the point of a panic attack but yeah <laughs> i've always come back but when you come back you feel better I feel a lot better. Hey, you feel like, oh, <laughs> everything's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Some people don't come back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's been books written on it. Alex Berenson wrote a book about it. That's why I've never I've never taken acid. My dad told me a long time ago, that, um, an uncle of his, or maybe took a, some, some good acid and never came back from it. So mm. I've always been spooked. But I mean, I, I, I have no problem with uh, psilocybin, but... Yeah, psilocybin is more manageable, I think. Uh, absolutely. Also, acid is m being made in a bathtub by some Grateful Dead fan. <laughs> Someone like, who's making that? Where are you? How did this get to me? He looks just like Jerry Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's going for it. Just circular glasses on, yeah. tinted lenses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just selling you the good stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's only a handful of people uh, supposedly in the country that know how to make acid. How many people are trying, though? <laughs> yeah, right? That's the scary part for me. Yeah. It's like, oh, my buddy Billy just, you know, started, you know, got him a little thing in the garage. Let's try it out. Yeah. Well, know. Ari was telling us about um, they had these uh, tests that they would do. These dudes were heavy partiers, and they had brought, like, tests with them so they could test all the different drugs. Like when you say heavy party, like experimental? Yeah. Like they're, they're, trying, they're, trying to... Go. They were going. They were going out there. Gotcha. So they, they were taking Molly and all kinds of shit. And so they did a test on the acid they had, and none of it was acid. All of it was mescaline. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They were getting these tabs, and they thought these tabs were acid, and they tested them. There was zero acid in it. It was just mescaline. So, uh, how do you, how do you get away with that? You get away with it because people don't have tests. So you're just selling this stuff that mescaline to make you trip. You know, you think you're on acid. Is it the same type of deal? I haven't done it, um, but it's peyote. Right, That's I know mescaline is. I'm scared of that too. It's. Uh, I had a friend of mine that swears to God that he saw a dude in a window in Manhattan when he was on mescaline, and the dude was like, you know, 400 yards away, and he could listen to every word that guy was saying. So he could hear every word he was saying. Huh. When he was on mescaline. Like through glass and he just heard walls him. and he just was looking at the dude. He could so he could see him. He was watching him and he could hear him talk. <laughs> he swears it. He you know he's a financial guy. Okay. Yeah, he's not a he's not a like a crazy hippie. Right. He's a guy that when he was in college he took mescaline in New York City, and uh, he was looking out the window and there's a guy way far away. He was looking at him through the window, his window and that guy's window. Bump bump. Sounds of the city. Fuck you. Through all that, watching that guy, you could hear him talk. Is it some cross-dimensional type Who shit? Who knows? Probably. Probably. There's probably like a frequency that you could tune into that we're all tuned into all the time. Sort of like when you know someone's talking about you and then the phone rings and huh. it's them. Right. Like you know they're thinking about you or you know something. Like people dismiss that. Oh, that's just chance. That's just luck. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe when... You're just thinking about someone for no reason, and then they call you. Maybe there's some connection there. Maybe there's something going on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have moments like that where I feel like it's just, that's the universe, just universe, and just trying to get you back to where you need to be. Yeah. yeah. I think there's something to that. I think there's something to fate. There's some strange element of it that seems to be true. Like, I think that uh, free will is probably real. There's some, there's probably issues with, there's, th there's choices you make that determine how your life goes for sure, but there also seems to be like some strange element of fate. Every now and then things come along and go, oh my God, this is what I have to do. 
This is what I have to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. Absolutely. And you, may, you, you might resist it. You're like, God, I don't want to do this. But part of you is like, this is what you're supposed to do. You can't shake it. Yeah, you can't shake it. Can't it's not like the universe like hits you with this frequency, this signal that lets you know this is the path you're supposed to take. And some people are way better at following that. Some people are really good at following that feeling. What's your? How, how do you think you you resonate on the scale of being good with that or not? I'm pretty fucking good with that. Yeah, that's. I'm pretty confident with that. Good. I pretty. I pretty. I know. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good with uh, recognizing shady people. I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Not a hundred percent, but yeah. I'm like I'm ninety five percent. I got you. I'm pretty fucking good. I'm pretty good knowing which path to go, when to take a chance, when to just go. You know, like when I moved out here, I moved out here in the middle of the Spotify deal. And they were like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, I'm telling you, this is the place to go. I got it. I'm just going to do this. This is the thing to do. Did you already see what's happening now happening? No. No, no idea. No idea. Not a chance I would even have imagined that Austin would become like the comedy scene that it is now. I never thought that. I just wanted to exist in a place where people weren't fucking with me. And then mm. when I got out here and I realized people weren't fuck with me, and then Dave and I were doing those shows at Stubbs, that reignited my desire to do comedy again. Then we started doing live shows at the Vulcan, and then Ron White got fired up about it, and I was like, okay, we got people out here now. And then other comics were moving here because you couldn't do any shows in L.A., and they'd see us doing shows out here, and they were like, hey, man, fuck this. I'm just going to go. And a, a bunch of them came, mm -hmm. and we didn't even have a club then. So then I felt like, okay, I talked these dudes into coming here. Like, now I have to just, like, build it. And then we just did it. But it was just all following instincts. It was like, this is this is the path. This mm -hmm. is what you're supposed to do. How long did you uh, think over this, like, move? Not very long. No, my, my instincts were to get out. When I saw those uh, cop cars on fire on the 10, yeah. I was like, okay, I see yeah. where this is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh-uh. You know, I, I got here just after the riots. Just after the riots. That's when, I, or L.A., rather. Uh, I got there in 94, just after the the riot, the Rodney King riots. And it was weird. Like, the, the, the city had just recovered. So I remembered. Uh. And then I watched all those videos of the chaos that happened when the, the police lose control of the city. And it just becomes madness. And I was like, oh, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Like yeah. this and then but back then there was no defund the police talk. In LA it was right. all defund the police, defund the police. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I you know, I was like, yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> you know. I'm 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 kind of, I'm over here. Yeah, I was like, nah, we gotta. <laughs> you gotta keep what cops. The fuck, <laughs> are you talking about? I need to call the motherfucking cops. <laughs> what are we talking about? You cannot. That that to me was like, all right, we we've lost sight of. It can't everybody just do whatever they want whenever they want all the time. Have it be their way all the time. They gotta. There's got to be some order here. There has to be. There has order. to be a line. Yeah, that it's important. Please, please, because yeah. this is all I know. Yeah, you know, if that goes away, then what the fuck? You got chaos, yeah. and I don't want that. No, I don't think anybody wants that. But, Just before you, uh, that's a crazy statement. Yeah, well, the wildest thing is having those people now, later, call for more police. Like, since some of them got like, there's this one politician. And she was like, let me be clear. My goal is dismantle and defund the police. And everybody's like, yay. And then recently she got carjacked and pistol whipped. And so she's <laughs> got blood lie. pouring out of her head. And she's like saying, we have to fire these people and prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> with <laughs> with <laughs> what? With no police? Because you defunded the police? Like what? Who's right. going to go get him? Are you going to go get him? Sure. That guy that pistol whipped you? Are you going to go find him and take his gun away? Right. And say, you are going to go in a cage now. To make the world safer. Yeah. No, police do that stupid. Right? That's that, that's that part of the police. The, the yeah. important part. Yeah, the part that keeps you safe, you fucking idiot. Mm, it's not, it's this idealistic that... perspective that so many people had. Mm. Which is such virtue signaling bullshit. You just don't even know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I had to get lost. I had to get out of there, man. I was lost in that shit for a while. Yeah. You hated L.A. Uh, what's that? You hated L.A., huh? 
I've I've really hated LA. No, I didn't hate LA. I just couldn't. I didn't know how to do LA, and the the people that I resonated with in LA was comedians. I would just only hang at the store. Yeah, that was my social life was that spot and like another spot where my buddy would give me like free drinks and I could smoke cigars down in the lounge. That was it. I wasn't. I didn't know how to really move around. I didn't understand how to mix and mingle in like a music space mm -hmm. i knew how to hang with like the weirdos yeah uh, like yeah. The, the cats who like were just off and didn't take themselves too seriously yeah you know so well i remember I, very clearly when you moved back here yeah because i remember you saying oh man this is so much better this is just what i like yeah I, I remember i met um remember i met ron uh white or like i was hanging with him and and uh you know he's like yeah i'm going back to Texas and spend more time in Texas and I remember running into uh, Post Malone out there and I was like what what's there to do in LA he's like I don't know man I'm getting the fuck up out of here so I was <laughs> like everybody that I was connecting with at that yeah. certain time was like I I'm out too so yeah I was like let's just go back to Texas you know and and, and do that yeah, you talking about how great it was to be back here and Ron talking about how great it because Ron came first mm-hmm Ron was the guy, because when he was out here, he was out here before the pandemic, and I was like, you really love it there? He's like, I fucking love it. I love it. He goes, this is the best place, the easiest place to fly out of. Yeah. Fly anywhere in the country. It's in the middle. You know, it's just like, it's like it's a great fucking town. Everybody's cool. It really is. Yeah. It really is, man. So, uh, Gary, that guitar's just sitting there. Huh? That guitar's just sitting there. All right, well, here we go. You need to bust right. that guitar out. How about if you... I'm going to teach you. Oh, we're going to teach me. Hey, this is for you. This is a guitar pick that's made from mammoth ivory. Mammoth ivory? Yeah, that's from a mammoth. That's from my friend John Reeves. Really? Yeah, he's got a, a place up in Alaska called the Boneyard. That, that thing that you have in your hand is probably 10,000 years old at least. And you want me to... Fuck yeah, that's yours. Drum a guitar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? yeah, yeah or yeah. do I put it that's in That's what it's case? for. No, 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 no. You play with that. I got another one here if you really? break it. I have a second one here. Right? Nice. What should I play? Anything. What do you want to play? What do you feel like playing? Oh, I don't know, man. I feel like... I feel like... You feel like playing new shit or old shit? Let's play some. Let's play some new shit. Let's play some new let's shit. Play some new shit. I've never played this new shit like this with an acoustic. A little backstory on this guitar. I did an event uh, with Joe Walsh, uh, Vets Aid, and he and his wife Marjorie gifted me this oh, wow. beautiful guitar. And, uh, it's one of my favorites to play around with at the house. Should I tune this thing? Whatever you want to do, man. Right? You tell me. Oh, man. Again, this is what I love about music. I don't know Let's what the fuck is going on. You know what? Well, I don't know either. We'll figure it out. Do you tune out. it with your phone? Well, I got a, there's a tuning app. On my phone, I, I can just use. Oh. so that way I don't have to you know, bring a box of How's stuff. How's it work? It's just, it just here's the note, and it knows, and like a, uh, if you set it to standard tuning, it'll get you right to where you need to be. And it's all just tension on the strings. Tension on the strings will get you to the note you want to be at. So. Um, right now, this one is, the string is sharp, so you gotta release some tension so the note goes down. Let's see, so you're trying to get it in the green. Ah, oh, I see. Oh. So, it's reading the, the hertz, the wave frequency. Wow. There you so go. It's too high or too low, and you try to match the perfect. And that's how that's you explain it like a professional. Well, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Just trying to help. No. He actually went to school for that. Yeah. 
I didn't, and that's why I sound like an idiot talking. About it. <laughs> it's crazy. That there's an app for that, though. That's amazing. Yeah, this is this is one of my favorite things about having a, a technology for this is I can make music on this phone and transfer it over to files on my big rig at the studio and incorporate them into records that I'm making. Wow. You know, so. What a time. Yeah. Right. As much as I bitch about it, I use it all the time. <laughs> yeah. So what a time to be alive. Yeah. What a time to be alive. Indeed. Um, we have a few self tunes. Speaking of, what is Sorry this? To interrupt. It's just in a <clears throat> it's self tunes. Cheers. Cheers. Man. One Good more brother. time. Thanks for having me, dude. My pleasure. Thanks Good for hanging with you. Uh, we're gonna get on that that double date. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm I'm free Saturday night. Wanna go on Saturday night? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Saturday night. All right. Okay. My, my wife's in town finally. Beautiful. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, so many good places to go out here too. Man, I, 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 yeah. That's one thing that I realize is I don't know shit. I've just been in the house mm. and in the studio and, and yeah. So my time to come up and figure out what's going on in the world is is uh. That ship has sailed, my friend, mm. until, until the album drop day. <laughs> and I'm going to sleep for like a good day and a half, turn my phone off. And what is album drop day? Which day? March 22nd. Oh, that's... Which that's is... Like tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow. Today, as, oh, as you're that's today, to as you're listening. Today. Yeah, today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Here we go. So cheers to that. Cheers to that. I'm just going to go ahead and down this thing. Okay. Because uh, that's how I feel right now. Woo. No, actually, never mind. I'm not. <sighs> so let's play some music. Let's play some music, Carrie. And then after this, you're going to learn an E chord. Okay. Some new shit. It's called Habits. While I talk about downing a glass of whiskey. Oh 
When you do these acoustic? That's the first time I've done it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm just figuring it out. Sorry. So, <laughs> if, sorry if I didn't really sell it to you. But, <laughs> but hey, there it is. That's awesome. That's amazing. You did it here for the first time. All right. What do I have to do? Yeah. Well, can you pull up an E chord? Fingering? Yeah. <clears throat> Finger placement. Um. Are you lefty? No. Right hand. Yeah, don't. Like this? Guitars are supposed to be banged up a little bit. Don't be scared of that. Okay. Do what do I do? That one, maybe. Yeah. Oh, boy. There we go. Let me get one of these picks. Oh, I got one. Of these. How cool are these things? Uh, that's amazing. Which part do you hold? Do you hold uh, the fat hold part? The, the fat part. Some people hold the. It's, it's kind of whatever, but this kind of gives me the sting that I need. Okay. As far as tone goes. Keep hitting this guitar. All right, so I'm putting this finger on the third. Yeah. And then this one on the fifth. And this one right below that. Yeah, you got to slide them in the same spot. Slide them in the same spot? Uh, yeah, they got to be in the That's right... Nice. What right. am I doing wrong? Yeah, those two bars. Oh. Tighter. See if there's All three of them little... are in the same spot? Oh, you can't no. see that. From two there. of them are in the same spot. Different, see that little spot there? They're going to be in that little spot there. Yeah, I got fat fingers. That's all right. There's a red Volkart is one of the baddest dudes to play a Telecaster, and he got some. Okay, I think I got it. I think I'm on the right one. No. Almost. <laughs> three. That one. Right? Is that it? And then where do I hit it? Am I doing it right? Push it more? Down right here. Down? This one. Like that? Oh. That one? There you go. The 12 string guitar might right? not be helping the most, but. Right there. Right here? Yep. Okay. You gotta str strum the strings now. There you go. It's not. It's close. It's pretty close. There it is. Yep. There you go. You're on your way to the best folk song anybody's ever heard. That's it. Read something Damn. crazy, E minor. You can do a second chord. Just release one finger. Yeah, just release the 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 first finger. Release your pointer finger. Put it back down. You go back and forth between two chords. There it is. Yeah. You almost got a song. Album coming soon. <laughs> The album coming soon. Oh, I can see how this could get very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This could be a real problem. See? This could be a real problem. Right? Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Like once you once once I first played an E chord on a fender uh Stratocaster through a Fender twin red knob. 1980s, 1990s amp, it was over for me. I quit yeah. caring about everything. I could see how this could be very addictive. You want me to take it away? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it seems like it would take forever to get good at, too. Nah, I think, I think like, with a guy like you who's, like, disciplined, uh, like, a guy like you, like, discipline is no problem. Mm. Right? Yeah, it's a, a problem. It's a problem that I have too much of it. It's obsession more than discipline. Well, then you'd probably be good at that in probably about a year and a half. Uh-oh. And you'd be out here mm. kicking ass. And Damn I'd have man. to go sit down somewhere, and I'd be settling into my photography job Damn. somewhere in Montana. I might have to learn how to play guitar. Man. That was fun. Yeah. I get it. You know? I get it now. Right. Oh. 
<laughs> Don't think too hard about it. But now I'm thinking too hard about it because I'm thinking about all the different positions on the guitar. That's like, one. We, we were listening to uh, both Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan, Voodoo Child, the different yeah. versions of yeah. it last night. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like Stevie Ray Vaughan's the only dude that it doesn't offend me when they cover Voodoo Child. Yeah. You know, like Voodoo Child, Slight Return, Hendrix, 67, 68 was so fucking good, man. It's like anybody covering that is like, what are you doing? But Stevie put like his own weird flair on it. Yeah. And I'm thinking about all the different positions of the fingers and the sounds and the thing. And you are singing while you're doing that, too. Mm. You're not just doing that. You're also manipulating your voice. Yeah, um, but as far as Voodoo Child goes, who who's engineered that? Was it Eddie Kramer? I don't know. With the panning and the psychedelic, mm. like back and forth, and the, oh and the, like the shaker. Sh- 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 yeah. sh- 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 it's oh my god. It is an it is otherworldly, man. And, it's uh, so good. That that right there is you can't. You can't recreate that Standing stuff. Standing next to a mountain, I chop it down with the edge of my hand. I got to say, I got asked to do a, a cover, and uh, I've always been hesitant about doing covers of Hendrix or Stevie, and I did it. And I was like, yeah, that's the reason why I've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you something, man. I know that you and Suzanne uh, were... I know you were even either talking or actively tried to do a version of Midnight Rider because I was there. Um, that how many years ago was that? Where you guys did that downtown in L.A.? Oh, I don't even know. That's, it was a long is, time yeah. ago. Almost a, a decade, ago, maybe somewhere around a decade ago. Uh, I brought my oldest daughter, and we we saw you guys live, and it was insane. And it was like a Monday night or some shit at yeah. midnight in some weird bar. In downtown LA, yeah. who? What? It was like an alcohol company put that on, right? Yeah, we were in business with an alcohol company, which we soon got out of because <laughs> I didn't think that they really liked us. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you send somebody that much alcohol if you really like them? <laughs> they like you too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they they sponsored this thing, so it was a very small gathering of people. But you guys did a copy. You, you did a cover rather of yeah. Midnight Rider. It was fucking amazing yeah it was fucking magic I, I never played that song before suzanne was just like come sit in she didn't play it before either she had to read the lyrics yeah. off her phone that's right that's right so yeah we yeah, we tried to we, we were trying to put something together you gotta cover that it I was think, so good man it was yeah. so good because it was midnight rider but with your flair to it this is it this oh, yeah, is from my it. instagram can you play this that ass, this one has gotten us flagged before. Oh, it had got us flagged before? Yeah. That's nah, hilarious. It was so good, though. That was such a fun night. Oh, my God. What a night. That was back when she was with Honey Honey? Yeah. Damn, that was a decade ago. Yeah, Isn't dude. that crazy? Uh, that Ben dude, he's a bad motherfucker, man. What year? 2016. 16. Close to a decade ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you guys have to cover that. Uh, yeah. I think, did we try? Did we do it? I can't even remember. We might have done it. <laughs> I haven't heard it. If oh, we yeah? did it, nobody sent it. Oh, I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, I feel maybe it was a dream. I think you guys were in talks. I remember Suzanne was saying you guys were going to do it. I think we did it. <laughs> I've done I, but I, you know what? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we did it, but I think I did it like in the middle of one of my sessions. Oh. Like, so when I'm in, I was in my mode, mm-hmm. and I remember. I think we did it. I feel like she said you guys were gonna do it. I don't know. I it's think done. It's 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 done. Somewhere it's done. It should be done. It's done. I think she's. I think she has it. That's crazy that I don't even know. That is crazy. I don't know what that says about my brain. <laughs> do you have a lot going on? Yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. Something that would be like a milestone for some people is just like a part of every day of your life. No, nah, I'm pretty sure we did it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she told me you did it, but yeah. I can't, I'm not positive. Yeah. I know she, I felt like she said something like you were going to do the music first and she was going to sing over the music. I don't remember. Oh, I think she did the record. Damn, that's yeah? fucked up. No. She had to do it with you. you no, know, no, 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 no. I think she actually did the track as far as recorded with her band. And, and oh, really? And I believe so. Dude, that's so crazy. That's mm. just like a blank spot in my mind. That night was a fun night. 
Yeah, it was. It was a fun night because it was just, that's one of those nights where, like, you get to see something where very few people get to see it. You know, just like when, when we saw the fight at the U, UFC Apex Center, there's no one there. Yeah. You get, like, you're like, wow, I'm so lucky to be here. Yeah, but, you know, Susanna's a special artist, though. She really is. She's really kind of a powerhouse. She, uh, I remember the first time I met her, she was doing Honey Honey at, uh, like, this funky su sessions thing in LA and just the voice man just the voice the songwriting it's like she can she, play anything she's plays violin violin plays yeah. guitar plays we got, everything we got we got cuts on this album that that you know we're not releasing but gonna be used for something else where she plays amazing violin on some stuff and she sings over she's incredible she's amazing she's I, and I didn't realize like when you work in the studio with her, you realize how genius she is. Mm -hmm. And like she's not playing around. No, no, she's, she's not, really good. She, you know, she's a studied. I have a friend musician. of mine who's a musician. We did an end of the world show on um, December twenty first, two thousand twelve, because oh, that was yeah. when the Mayans thought it was going to be the end I remember, of the world. I remember. I was watching. <laughs> I was freaked out. I was ready to go with y'all, man. <laughs> so we did an end of the world show, and I said, let's put together a real fun show. So it was Stan Hope, Joey Diaz, me. Uh, honey, honey. I think Duncan was on the show too, and so we did the show in L.A. Um, and uh, my friend, who's a musician, is like he he saw her. And he goes, "Yo," he goes, "That girl is fucking talented." He goes, "Dude, like she could play anything. Like look at her. Like her voice is incredible. She plays a violin. This is insane." Yeah, yeah. She's and she's a badass guitar player, badass writer. She does everything. Yeah. Yeah. But, and she's cool as fuck. Absolutely. She's so fun. Absolutely. She's so fun to be around. She's hilarious. I feel like if shit went down and you needed her to squat up with you, like she could throw. A... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want her on your side in the in the apocalypse. Absolutely. She'd figure it out. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah man. So much respect to her. Yeah. Much respect to her. Much respect to you too. Congratulations on the new album. Like Thanks, I said, dude. It's beautiful. It's awesome. It's always Thanks. good to hang with you. Thanks for listening and hanging. It. Thanks Anytime. for your time. Thanks for the cigar. Yeah, no problem. I got you. All right. Yeah. Um, let's go out. Saturday night. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. All right. That's it. Bye, everybody. All right.